place does a night like the night better than New Orleans. The LSU and Clemson Tigers are in town. There's a national championship to be won. The sun's going down and it's time to cut loose. Hit the stations of the Nova Cross. Find a band and a club and a floor. Let the music take you away. Follow a big chief through Treme. Bounce down Ramper. Bounce down North Flavor. They're talking about this game on every street. Kids all over the city are dreaming of one day playing in a game like this. This is a football crazed city. You can hear the St. Aug band for blocks. Listen to the horns. That's how the city talks. Corey Henry's on the stage, and he's got a special guest. Y'all make some noise for the world's greatest. Y'all make some noise. Welcome the pride of Hollygrove, 17th Ward. Lil Wayne. It's a foggy night in America's most festive city, and inside this monument to mega events, the Superdome, we are ready for the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T, a collision of unbeaten LSU, unbeaten Clemson, what a quarterback showcase. Trevor Lawrence, tall and tough, and 25-0 and as a college starter. Joe Burrow, the landslide winner of the Heisman Trophy, also perfect as a starter. Clemson, the defending champion, seeking a 30th consecutive victory. And LSU on home soil, hoping to cap a perfect season. They survived very different semifinals. Clemson clawing from 16 down to conquer Ohio State. LSU clobbering Oklahoma by five touchdowns. And welcome inside the Superdome. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbster, we are thrilled to be able to bring you the CFP National Championship game together for the sixth time. And inside this building, Kirk, which has been buzzing for an hour, it's all set up. LSU hoping to cap what's been a magic carpet ride of a season, supremely confident. But there's Clemson, the toughest out in college football the last couple of years, trying to reach the Mount Rushmore of college dynasties with a win tonight. That would be a dynasty. If Clemson were able to cap off the 2019 season, with a win tonight. Three of the last four. That's as good as you're going to see in the modern era of college football. And how about LSU? What a story that they've been, especially their offense. Most prolific offense I've maybe ever seen. And it won't be remembered unless they win tonight. So a lot at stake for both these teams. When LSU has football, it'll be a matchup with the stingiest defense in the country, Clemson, against the highest scoring offense. And in this city known for great music, it's quite an ensemble that Ed Orgeron has assembled there for the first time ever. A Power 5 team as a 5,000-yard passer. Joe Burrow actually has 55 touchdowns. 
Clyde Edwards Alaire, the hometown hero from Baton Rouge, one of the most versatile backs in the country, a thousand yard rusher. Jamar Chase, the top deep threat of the sport. Justin Jefferson, the best slot receiver. How does anybody stop all that? Well, Joe Burrow right now is in control of an offense that nobody has been able to stop up to this point. You just showed an incredible group of players around him. I think five NFL players eventually around him. And I think you're looking at a guy that I've never seen prepare. A college quarterbacks prepare. But to have answers the way Joe Burrow has this year, his understanding of the scheme, how to attack, where the weakness is, has been unbelievable. The one thing I would remind people of is Brent Venables has had 15 days to get his defense ready to come up with a few curveballs on trying to come up with ways that can confuse Joe Burrow and especially his offensive line and try to get pressure on him. That's the way Clemson can try to slow him down. Venables coach, you get his eighth national championship game. Think about that. There's a quiet assurance on the Clemson side. They've been here before and done big things. They've been climbing now in this CFP era, and they have won two out of three, trying to make it three out of four. Yes, they climb past Alabama. they become a monster in the postseason. Check the winning percentage in the CFP era. I love that look. That really sums up who Clemson has become as much as Dabo Sweeney tries to say, poor old Clemson. <laughs> Nobody respects us. The reality is, look at the trophies. Look what they've accomplished. They're 60 minutes away from winning their third in the last four years. Trevor Lawrence is the key. He stepped up against the Buckeyes. The running game wasn't there. They couldn't get ETN going. They couldn't get the passing game going. So he ran the ball to victory. Tonight, that won't be enough. Against Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence has to have a big game throwing, and his receivers have got to do a much better job of getting off of press coverage from LSU. And their great running back, Travis Etienne, back in his home state, hoping for a big night in the Superdome. LSU's defense, we saw them struggle a bit early in the season. They've gotten healthy. They've played much better down the stretch. They'll need all of that tonight. Yeah, they're going to try to come up with a plan to try to get Trevor Lawrence as much as they can off balance, slow down the Clemson running game, and then bring the pressure, turn them loose, and try to get into the face as best they can of Trevor Lawrence. Heavyweight title bet and the trophy goes to the winner. Paw Prince from Clemson have been all over that in recent years. Ed Orgeron didn't even want to look at that trophy the other day. He is superstitious. We cannot wait. The Tigers versus the Tigers inside the Superdome. Kickoff coming up next. But now let's kick it to Kenny Main. And welcome back to the AT&T pregame showcase. Kickoff just minutes away now. The Tigers in all orange tonight have not lost in 742 days since the loss here to Alabama a couple years ago. The Tigers in white, purple, and gold haven't trailed in the last 25 quarters. Time for the presentation of the colors. and our national anthem, we go to public address announcer, Mr. John Magrino. Please rise and remove your hats as our nation's colors are presented by the Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans All Service Color Guard, including members of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. Tonight, as we honor our nation, please remain standing and welcome members of the ROTC units from Louisiana State University and Clemson University, joined by the President of the United States and the First Lady.
Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome multi-platinum, two-time Grammy award-winning artist, Louisiana's own Lauren Daigle. chance to prove a lot more people wrong you know it's years of hard work that culminate in one moment get that out of the tiger you put that hard of a champion on full display tonight i feel like there's no doubt that we're the best team Geron, Louisiana native from deep in the bio, LaFouche Parrish, living his dream job and he would have just told his guys to buckle their chin straps, which he calls the greatest sound of college football. Bayou Bengals going to war, 81 miles from their home campus. Defending champions, Clemson underdogs to this team tonight inside the Superdome. the energy and the emotion and not be overwhelmed by it. They'll play for a championship in this building for the fourth time. They're two and one in the first three. So charged up, they knocked over the photographer on the way out of the field. Confident football team. Understatement. Yep. Clemson, a more quiet assurance. Trevor Lawrence, the performance he put together with an upset stomach. The championship game a year ago against Alabama. They love being the underdog. Relish this role, does Dabo Sweeney. Seven Tigers are playing in their third national championship game. 36, like Trevor Lawrence. 
Tampa Championship a year ago. 14 guys started in that championship game. They're back. Kirk Devilsweet, he's a Rocky fan. He's talked about Rocky IV. Rocky Balboa trying to beat Ivan Drago in Russia. That's the way he framed the challenge to his team, who didn't know who Ivan Drago was, by the uh, way. He's actually used different rock, Rocky references for different championships in the past, and this one happens to be Rocky IV on the road. Burrow leading the LSU captains out. A Pac-12 crew is in charge of this championship game tonight. As they were four years ago. Chris Coit is our referee. Brady Jarrett and Booker McFarlane, the honorary captains. Let's go to Coit for the coin toss. Welcome to the 2020 College Football Playoff National Championship game between the Clemson Tigers and the LSU Tigers. Congratulations to both teams for earning the opportunity to compete for the title of national champions. I'm Chris Coit. This is Francisco Villar. We and the remainder of our officiating crew are proud to represent the Pac-12 Conference on the field today. Now, a special occasion requires a special coin. On one side of today's coin is the image of the national championship trophy and this is heads. On the other side of the coin is the image of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, and this is tails. Clemson is the designated visiting team they'll call the toss. Heads or tails? Heads is the call. It is tails. LSU has won the toss. LSU is deferring their choice to the second half. Clemson, you're going to receive. LSU, which way do you want to kick? Okay, go ahead and put your backs to that goal. Clemson shall receive the opening kickoff. Good luck, guys. Let's have a great game. Ed Orgeron wants his defense on the field first to build all this crowd noise and show confidence in that unit against Trevor Lawrence. Maria Taylor with Dabo Sweeney. Maria. Thanks, Chris. Well, Coach, your team's been doubted all season, but you told them they'll have a chance to prove that they are the best. What makes you confident that they'll be able to win this matchup tonight? Well, I mean, we got a good team. I like my guys, so I watch them practice every day. Got a great group of people that love each other. Hoping we got a chance. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Now we send it over to Tom Rinaldi. Maria thank, Maria, thank you very much. Ed, all it's taken to get here, all it means to you, how do you manage the challenge of the emotion in coaching this team to a win? You know, after the first hit, that all goes out. It's about fundamentals, technique, play for 60 minutes. They're a good team. We're a good team. Let's battle. Appreciate the time. Go Tigers. The cut at Orgeron's head came from a punch that he gave himself after a practice to get his guys fired up. He's a unique individual, Kirk. He really is. He has a team that is incredibly fired up against a, the old veteran Clemson team that's been there and done that. That leadership and experience would tend to give the advantage to the Clemson Tigers, but uh, we'll see about the emotion of, Cle of LSU here early. Orgeron hoping for an early stop, hoping the crowd will continue to make life tough on Lawrence. They've got the busiest and the best kickoff man in the country. Avery Atkins, a sophomore from Auburn, Alabama, to boot it away. Travis Etienne hoping he'll have a chance against all odds to return this kick. Comes from Jennings, Louisiana, about 100 miles away. Tigers versus the Tigers for the title. Should be a lot of fun. It's a line drive that lands a few yards behind at the end zone. So here comes Trevor Lawrence. Sublime performance against the Crimson Tide of the championship game a year ago. Never thrown a pick in a postseason game, but boy, he had to show his toughness. The helmet shot against Ohio State. He thought he'd hurt himself. They were down 16 points at that point. He ran and threw them to victory. Yeah, 16 carries on the night. He had to really, his legs had to be the difference in that game. 25-0 as a starting quarterback. Pressed a little bit early, trying to live up to the hype. Settled down in the second half of the season. It's only thrown one interception in the last seven games. The 
Looking to throw, and it's Justin Ross. A trick play right off the bat. ETN takes the handoff from the receiver. LSU not fooled. Christian Fulton made the play. Yeah, L LSU flying around. Clemson trying to catch them napping a little bit, trying to get the ball to the outside. ETN's going to have to have a big night. T. Higgins didn't play well against Ohio State, got dinged up. Will have to play incredibly well in the perimeter. Chase on the best pass rusher, and Stingley, the top freshman corner in the nation. Free play, and it's caught downfield. Ross, after the LSU defense had jumped offside, Lawrence makes the most of the free play. Well, Clemson felt the scouting report on the LSU man-to-man. -man. They play a ton of man, but they give you outside leverage. They take away the fade. Offside. They take away the outside the defense. in the neutral zone at the snap. The penalties decline. The result of the play is a first down. So instead of being able to go to the outside, he pumps to the outside, and Trevor felt that. He felt Jason, who's amped up in this building, jump, and then he knew. See how he goes to the inside? But Fulton gave him that move. Clemson researched that in these two weeks in prep, knew they could get that inside crease. 35-yard gain, looking to throw again. ETN gets the lob from Lawrence and has space, breaks a tackle, and is dragged down near the 26-yard line. Tigers threatening instantly. A little screen, a little slip screen, get him out in space. Travis ETN just needs room to work with. Outstanding, the difference maker in this offense. Nice call, and how about the touch there by Trevor Lawrence going over top of the LSU defense. Throwing again. This is Amari Rogers, muscled out. ETN as a receiver was a monster against Ohio State. Those two touchdown receptions were huge. Yeah, Ohio State won the line of scrimmage and couldn't run the ball. They feel they can run him maybe on the edges, but they really think he could be a difference in the pass game like that. Isn't it interesting? LSU, this crowd, this environment, Clemson's answer to that is attack, aggressive, going after LSU, getting them on their heels, taking this crowd out of the game. Four plays, four passes. Lynn J. Dixon is now to the right of Lawrence in the backfield. He's got the football trying to get wide, but the LSU defense sets the edge and knocks him down for a one-yard loss for Shard Lawrence on the play. Yeah, Jacoby Stevens, number three, does a really good job of setting the edge. He didn't necessarily make the tackle, but he got off the block at J.C. Chalk, forced him back to the inside. Dixon back to the inside with the linebackers led by Queen are able to make the play with that great speed. First, third down. Clemson converting at 46% this season. He recognizes pressure right there. Let's see if LSU gets out of that. A dummy called Grant Delpit tipped his hand, showing pressure from the inside. Looks like he's backing off now. Like bucket two. Here he comes. And they've got Lawrence for a sack back at the 36. Delpit, Kirk, it was who got through. Well, they, I think Clemson felt they had him. And then they backed out of it. He's right here. He kind of sits back, and then he comes a little bit on a delay. I think it's good coverage downfield, nowhere for him to go with the football. So Delpit, even though he's kind of in a safe blitz, eventually gets home. So that forces a long field goal attempt. B.T. Potter is the sophomore from South Carolina. Check it. They're not going to go for what would be a, a career long. He was hitting from this range in the pregame warm-up, but instead Sweeney decides to send out Will Spires, the punter, and now with one second to go, he's going to take a delay of game here, back him up a little bit. Interesting. Trying to pin LSU's offense back deep in their first possession. Hey, the way Joe play Burrow's again. executed, I don't offense. blame him. You, know, you take a so shot at a field down. goal there, especially early in the game, and if you end up missing it, you're giving Joe Burrow great fields position. So two chunk plays for Clemson. They threaten, but the big sack by Delpit stalls the opening possession. Spires very good. He's knocked a dozen punts dead inside the 10-yard line. Hits it high with backspin, and the coverage team able to corral it at about the six-yard line. So, pin back against his goal line. Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow takes over. LSU's first possession coming up. Joe Burrow comes from Athens in southeast Ohio. Star in hoops and in football. Not recruited by his dream school, Nebraska, where his dad and brothers played. Went to Ohio State, played three seasons there. 
Didn't get much of a chance. Transfers to LSU. Last year, pretty good. This year, off the charts, sensational, and broke records for the margin of victory in the Heisman Trophy. Plays the quarterback position like a middle linebacker. Incredible ability to process and get the ball out quickly. Clemson's got to come up with some plans to try to get him out of rhythm early. Empty backfield. Five playmakers flanking Burrow. And he's going to scramble and stays alive and chucks it downfield and it's caught at the 43 by the tight end Thaddeus Moss that's part of Burrow extending plays but there is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage so hold on and there's got to be a man downfield uh, and Adrian no McKay down. downfield offense number 73 five yard penalty replay first down and yeah, the left guard Adrian McGee that's a long time in pass protection and he eventually gets across the line of scrimmage. You'll see him, but how about the job here? This is what makes this guy so good. Burrow, they've got it. Foster's unable to bring him down. And then there you see the offensive lineman right here. They're a good seven or eight yards downfield when he makes that, that throw. So take away a potential big play, the creativity. And by the way, Brent Minimal's first play, bringing Isaiah Simmons off the slot on a blitz. Negates the 36-yard gain, makes it first and 13. Tigers rush only three, and short throw is incomplete. That time they were all over Moss with Simmons. Uh, everybody wanted to know what Brent Venables would do with two weeks to go. What I just saw is a lot like what Kevin Steele did. Three down linemen, one linebacker, seven defensive backs, a 3-1-7. He's trying to get more athletic ability, more speed on the field. So Nolan Turner, 24, is out there. 14 is also out there. Denzel Johnson, who's not played a ton of ball. But tonight, he's starting against this prolific offense and all these weapons. Mentioned the Auburn game. They gave LSU trouble in the red zone, although the Tigers did gain more than 500 yards against Steele's defense. Edwards Hilaire, they fake it to him on the slant, incomplete. So again, tight coverage, and Jamar Chase couldn't come up with it. Third and long. That's a great matchup back into the boundary in the length of A.J. Terrell. All he's heard about for two weeks. I love how physically he gets at the line, gets away maybe with a little bit of a grab there. But I love how Brent Venables is challenging these receivers on the outside, trying to again disrupt that timing, try to affect nine with all these talented receivers. Clemson's defense has been a nightmare for opponents on third down, who convert just 31 percent. Clemson fans are loud right behind Burrow from the end zone. Gets it out quickly, complete, but in heavy traffic, Justin Jefferson is going nowhere. They've scored opening drive touchdowns in six consecutive games. Punted only once this season, and that was against Auburn. Well, Brent Venables has a reputation of bringing pressure. This time, that's why he gets the ball out so quickly on third down. But instead, he rushes four, has eyes on the quarterback. Quick throw by Burrow, and it allows the rest of that Tiger secondary to rally to the football. 29-year-old lefty punter, Zach Von Rosenberg, to boot it away. Mari Rogers comes up and fields it at the 42. Spins free of one tackle, but it'll be knocked down right there. But Sweeney playing field position. It works out perfectly as Lawrence will take over in plus territory for the second drive. Yeah, that's exactly why he did it. Confidence that he has in his defense in the first series after this long wait goes to the Clemson Tigers. It's the first time since the Auburn game that LSU's not been able to put sustain a drive and put points on the board. But if put that in a little bit to the side, the 3-1-7 that Auburn played with is what Clemson puts on the field defensively in that first drive. Lawrence was 4-for-4 four four in that opening drive for 51 yards. ETN, his first carry, accelerates, and he'll get about four. Jacob Phillips, the top tackler in LSU, made the stop. I think the best chance to run the ball because of the size of the interior of LSU's defensive front. They're going to have to get him on the outside where he has great acceleration. And they can put a dent on that defensive line on the edge and try to get that edge and get yards, positive yards. Second and five, play action and a slant incomplete. Tight coverage there against Amari Rogers by Kerry Vincent, Jr. Well, he got there early. 
We're seeing these officials early in this game. Let them play. Hey, Vincent got there. Watch five. Jump this round of slant. Gets there a little quick and a little early with a push in the back. Easily could have been called. Third and five. This is where they've got to be able to win, right there at the top with T. Higgins. One on one. Lawrence is looking to the right and launches downfield over the shoulder, just a little bit too far for Higgins. Christian Fulton, the stud corner in coverage. Now they went with both their most talented receivers into the boundary. See Justin Ross and T. Higgins. It creates one on one. There's that outside leverage, a little pull there, but the ball not really catchable. Outside leverage forces Higgins to the inside, just not able to connect. Pretty good coverage there by LSU. So for the second time in two possessions, Clemson gets inside the LSU 40, but stalls and here's Spires trying to do what he did about uh, four minutes ago, which has been LSU deep. Big fella may have kicked this one a little farther than he meant to, and even though it's not caught cleanly, coverage team does its job perfectly. Burrow backed up again. Back after these messages, you're watching the House Football Playoff National Championship game presented by AT&T. The College Football Playoff National Championship game is presented by AT&T and in part by the Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. And the Nachos Party Pack from Taco Bell. Each Clemson championship was won as an underdog in the ultimate game. At about 600 miles from here in Clemson, the streets are packed for a watch party. That's a crowd. their defense get Burrow and come the off the field with a three and out. The loss of one yard. That drive began at the seven, Kirk. Now they're at the four. Joe Brady telling us this week along with Steve Insminger that it, you know they, they, they don't know what defenses are going to do when they play them because they've been so effective and so explosive now they've got the book on them they see that 3-1-7 they're seeing different look and now they have a feel at least for what Brent Venables wants to do against this offense now they make their adjustments Thaddeus Moss Randy's son motioning to the right of the formation three receivers bunched there and it's Edwards Hilaire who's hit in the backfield. Simmons is all over the place in the early going. But he's got eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage anticipating a run here. And they guess right. Nobody's there to pick up Isaiah Simmons who comes off the edge again. And you're right. He's active, Chris. Now Burrow from the end zone. First completion of the night. And he finds Chase, who's a couple yards short of the marker. Kendrick in coverage. Challenging Chase, challenging these receivers. That's their answer to try to slow them down. Not giving them much space at all to work with. Playing with tempo, they get it out quickly, but it's incomplete. Pressure got to Burrow. The throw was inaccurate to Jefferson, and the punt team comes out again. Well, this odd look with three down linemen really opens up the playbook for Brent Venables to bring pressure. It's making the offensive line guess where that pressure might come. That's why that opened up like that and freed Isaiah Simmons. Joe Burrow typically in command, setting the protections, understanding where the blitz pressure is. And after the first two series right now, he's kind of scratching his head, trying to figure out Venables' scheme. Two for five in the early going. A punt not very good by Von Rosenberg, but it gets a nice bounce. And Clemson will be backed up in their own end to start at about the 32-yard line. Burrow and the Bayou Bengals used to exploding early on offense. Hasn't happened scoreless midway first quarter. This year marks the fifth anniversary of the College Football Playoff Foundation's Extra Yard for Teachers initiative. Celebration, CFP Executive Director Bill Hancock and ESPN President Jimmy Pitaro. Presenting a six-figure check moments ago to students and teachers from New Orleans Public Schools and the Jefferson Parish Schools and teachers around the Dome asked to stand to be recognized. Third possession for Clemson. They've threatened in LSU territory each time but punted. 
Set up this time at the 33. Not seen him run the ball from the quarterback spot yet. Play action, zips it across. Catch made by Braden Galloway. And the Tigers tight end off and rumbling. A flag comes in on the tackle down to the 10-yard line. And the man who was suspended for an entire season makes his first impact play in ages. Boy, he made a great play there, but I think it's going to come part of it that will come back with a block by T. Higgins, a blindside block. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense, number five, 15-yard penalty, still reels in a first down. Move the ball back, and they'll spot it about the LSU 40. Yeah, this is way downfield. You see it almost to about the 28-yard line. He'd already picked up big yards. Gets in front of them, but still, because Queen had no idea, he's a defenseless player, you can't make that block. It's one of the new rules in college football to protect these players. But a great call on first and ten to get those linebackers' eyes in the backfield on ETN and on Trevor Lawrence, and they catch him napping by sneaking Galloway behind him. The game is 42 before the penalty. Pump fake. Lawrence still's got the football looking to run. Makes a cut and slides down at the 30. You know, mark him just short of the first down. I mean, when, when, he's, when he is decisive as a runner, I think that's the area that his game has changed the most from last year to this year. He's up to 220 pounds. He's running the ball. It makes those safeties have to really be aware of 16, not just as a passer, but the threat of him to pull it down and run the ball as we saw last week against Ohio State, 16 carries, 107 yards. All of a sudden, you got to pay attention to the Clemson tight ends. Galloway in the slot to the right. Lawrence is looking over the middle, trying to buy time, and delivers a strike. And sliding down is Higgins. He flagged down again in the offensive line pit area. Well, where the umpire threw that typically would be a holding call or a hands up in the face. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 62. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Siaki Ika, the freshman from Salt Lake City, and then will move the ball inside the 10. Yeah, he's up against the center, Pollard. Just to the right there, 62. He's trying to do everything he can with his hands. And see that right hand gets up. The follow through. Helmet almost comes off of Pollard. Umpire saw it, made the call. First and goal at the six. Not only the gain, but then the yards on top of that on the back end. Clemson has been lethal in the red zone this year. Touchdown 75% of the time. In a game like this, every possession down here, you don't want to ever settle for a field goal against Joe Burrow on that offense. They want to score touchdowns. Lawrence motions out. Direct snap to ETN. Who makes a cut? Accelerates. Reaches toward the goal line. Is just short. So a wrinkle. They're, they're, they're just coming out unloading everything right now as, as play callers with Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott. I, it's, it's interesting to see how quickly he puts his foot in the ground, accelerates, and then the power to almost extend to that goal line. Second down. Lawrence has still got it. He's got a stand-up touchdown. And the Clemson Tigers draw first blood in the Superdome. LSU loses their edge. It's an area that they really challenge. Trevor Lawrence is making the right read and giving a good feel on his own read. Stay on that ride, make him commit to ETN, and then pull it out and get to the corner for the touchdown. BT Potter on for the conversion. Five play, 67 yards to reach the end zone, and LSU is behind for the first time in 25 quarters since late October. Lawrence as a runner again, just like against Ohio State. Want more stats? Hey Siri, who has the most passing touchdowns in college football? No, the answer is Joe Burrow, who's three away from Cole Brennan's single season FBS record of 58. It's been easy for Burrow. 
eight touchdowns in the first nine possessions of the semifinal romp over Oklahoma. But just like last year's championship game, Clemson's defense has set the tone early. It was a pick six by A.J. Terrell last year. And they have stymied LSU, which gains about eight yards of play, Kirk. They got six yards in the first six plays. And they've also been backed up deep in their own uh, area. You know, they're inside their own five one time at a four-yard line, also at the sevens to Steve Insminger on the right, calls the plays. Joe Brady, who's been such a big splash as the passing game coordinator coming over from the New Orleans Saints, has brought more of a NFL scheme to this offense, and it's been dynamic. I mean, you're talking about an offense that scored 49 points a game to lead the country. They've gone through everybody in these first two possessions. They're kind of guessing right now against this 3-1-7 look with the seven defensive backs. Let's see what they do to counter what Venables has thrown at them early, Kurt. Clemson brings pressure on first down. They pick it up. The throw to Edwards Alaire, but not much after the catch. Tanner Muse forced them out. Well, we sat down with them. They, they talked about dime and whether it's five, six, seven defensive backs with what they call Penny. They said we want to give Joe full progression reads, meaning give him a chance to get the ball out of his hands quickly, find the matchup that we like best. Look for the slant. Now delivers, and it's caught by Terrence Marshall. And LSU's first, first down out across the 40. And that, and that, that time he had enough time to eventually find that window. Nice delayed route there where Marshall is able to get underneath. Good protection, good timing that time. One of the first times we've seen LSU with that timing that, again, has been historical in the 2019 season. 15-yard gain off the play action. Burrow is pressured, steps up, cannot escape. He'll be sacked by Justin Foster, who has to step up tonight, Kirk, because Niles Pinckney can't go. That's right. He's on the edge. He wandered the edge tonight. Which Isaiah Simmons, they've been bringing him quite a bit when they feel that they can get home on passing situations. Here's a first and ten. And because Simmons forced him to step up, Foster eventually gets off of his man and gets to Burrow. Pinkney has an ankle, so guys like Darnell Jeffries, Foster, will play a bigger role tonight. It is a deep defensive front, though. Second and 13. They show pressure. It's picked up. Burrow throws, but again, that's off target. And Burrow looks nothing like he did through the first 14 games so far, does he? Not at all. And, and as soon as he saw his running back, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, go all the way to the top of the screen, matched up against Isaiah Simmons, that's the matchup that he wants. But he, first of all, the receiver, the running back here, Edwards Hilaire, doesn't separate from Simmons with that route. And Joe looked very uncomfortable with that delivery. Usually the ball comes out quick. It comes out crisp, tight spiral, accurate. Not the case there. 0 for 2 on third. They need 13 yards here. Tight bunch formation. Play clock at 2. Just get it off. Burrow scrambling, scanning, fires downfield, in and out of the hands of Jamar Chase. Terrell in coverage, and they force another punt. Well, they're, they're giving the, the again, the, the feel as if they're bringing pressure here with Skowski. They'll move the freshman around. He actually ends up getting there, Tyler Davis. But he's able to keep this play alive with his athletic ability. Great coverage downfield. They're covering for a long, long time. And that, again, the length of A.J. Terrell at 6'1", 190, able to stretch out and knock that ball away. Already the third punt for Von Rosenberg. He only had three punts combined in the wins over top five teams, Georgia and Oklahoma. This one will roll dead at the 25-yard line, but Lawrence and Clemson takes over up seven. Well, it's coming up Saturday, February 22nd, the biggest heavyweight fight in decades. Deontay Wilder, Alabama guy, faces the lineal champion Tyson Fury, live from Las Vegas. Undefeated heavy hitter, square off for the second time. That was a hard-hitting draw the first time. February 22nd, live on pay-per-view. Not what Coach O expected so far in this first quarter. His defense has been puzzled. His offense has been shut down.
Play action. Lawrence steps up and launches deep. Higgins, and it is broken up. Flags come in. It was Delpit coming late. Fulton on the coverage against Higgins. Well, they're not hesitating when they get single high to try to get that ball back to T. Higgins one on one. Interference. Defense number one. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's the third time that they've tried to go vertical to T. Higgins, who has great acceleration, pretty tight coverage, but he's got a step on him. They're going to take that shot. Delpit, who's got great closing speed, comes over, but an easy call there for the officials on the P.I. They'll also take the penalty over the big gain. Moves the ball to the 40. ETN in traffic, spins, but cannot escape the tackle there of Fulton. Still a nice first down game. Good patience there. Giving his blockers a chance, J.C. Chalk, the tight end, pulling around along with the, the left guard, John Simpson. Expect he comes in to use tempo, and they have. There's a high throw over the head of Amari Rogers the first time that Trevor has misfired tonight. Yeah, that was a, a run-pass option where he feels that slot receiver, and if he gets pressure from the man defending him, it was Jacoby Stevens, three. He didn't get there, but just by coming into his face, he forced him to throw that ball up high. Clemson needs four. Four-man rush. Lawrence gets it out. Incomplete. Tried to find Ross on a slant. Derek Stingley Jr., the fine true freshman corner, was there. And the LSU Tigers defense gets a stop. How good of a matchup will that be with Ross against Stingley? Both both these receivers, Ross or Higgins, with their size going up against Stingley, who's had a, just an incredible freshman year. 6'1", 190 pounds. Comes from Baton Rouge, was the number one overall recruit. Targeted a lot, but he is hard to complete passes against. Spires has been great. Yeah, knocking punts dead inside the 10 and pinning LSU back tries to do the same thing And that time Didn't quite get the punt off and they weren't trying to take a delay a game Delay a game Offense five-yard penalty still fourth down Don't mix in a rugby punt. You can see Spires was rolling to his right Well, they also took Isaiah Simmons who was lined up as a personal protector and then motioned out Took a little bit of time and eventually that caught up to him. Brief conversation a moment ago between Sweeney and Spires. The third year punter for Clemson. Nothing tricky. It's a low boot. Stingley on the run. Can he make a man miss? He does make a couple of guys miss. Athletic return as he spins out near the 30 yard line. Well, Taco Bell has brought the best of the regular season to the CFP. Taco Bell Live My Student section providing free tickets to students from both schools, giving the biggest game back to the biggest fans. Boy, if I'm, if I'm Joe Burrow and he says, we bragged all year about his receivers, his tight end, Moss, Hilaire, the running back, how they have such great futures in the NFL. But right now, they're losing the one-on-one -on -one battles to that Clemson secondary. And that's the first this year. Late pressure. Burrow gets it out. Moss makes the catch. Not much after the catch as Simmons was all over him. That time he felt that blitz. One of the first times he saw the blitz of Kayvon Wallace and Skowski coming from his right. So he knew that he had a void. They just didn't have the numbers there. So at least he's able to get positive yards on first and ten. Edwards Hilaire, and he cannot escape the tackle of Skalski. And he's got that tattoo in his left bicep that says war like the warrior you are. And he is a warrior out there. No doubt about it. He's had a monster year. They, they go with that condensed formation, and that, that gives Clemson a chance defensively to bring eight guys up close to that box area where Brent Venables has more bodies than they can block, but they're still able to fight for that first down.
LSU still trying to get that spark, get the momentum going and create that, that avalanche that we've seen so often. Edwards Hilaire just lowers his shoulder. He delivered a blow to Terrell and Motors for a nice first down gain. Well, that, that can spark an offense, a run like that. We run through a, a defender and a would-be tackler. The corner, Terrell, comes up. He's right there with a chance to, to make that play. But it gives you an idea of the low center of gravity, how physical of a back Clyde Edwards Hilaire can be. Low center of gravity, a nice way of saying he's very short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very effective. Now Burrow going to launch downfield for Chase. Who's got it? Touchdown, LSU. It took a while, but the Bayou Bengals offense says join the party. Well, that's the answer from Joe Brady and Steve Insminger. Win the one-on-one -on -one battles outside the numbers. Jamar Chase has done that all year. What great ball skills and vision. Battling there with Terrell. Fighting, losing his balance, and keeping his eyes on that football to come up with a touchdown. The sophomore who won the Bolitnikoff Award is the top receiver, Kirk. Scores for a 13th time this season on a deep shot. That's by far the most. Yeah, and, and the thing is... They've got they've been doing a good job with Brent Venable's game of putting up the, the pressure. These safeties have been cheating. This, you know, you get him here, you get this guy down. They're trying to take away a lot of the quick throws, a lot of the underneath things. And this time he just kind of sits there, but he's Turner's not able to get back and help Terrell out. So it's essentially Terrell on an island against Chase gets behind him. And there's the accuracy of Burrow for their first touchdown of the night. It was good on good in that matchup, and that one goes to the supremely confident sophomore from the supremely confident senior. What that can do is that can help. Now the threat of that is going to give Brent Venables pause on all this pressure, and now you can get back to trying to run your basic offense, the quick throws, the quick slants, and, and the run game, and eventually take another shot downfield if you get isolated one-on-one. -on -one. They were quiet and surprised by Clemson's fast start, but now it's seven apiece. Let's see what Lawrence can do. They will not have great field position this time after the touchback. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Some of the fog has lifted in New Orleans. That's good news. Goodyear recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear more driven. One of the great moments, Kirk, that have happened inside this dome. Seven Super Bowls, a whole bunch of championship games. In fact, the last four times LSU's played for a title right here in this building. You've seen the first three. Yeah, think about it. When I think of this this building, I think of Michael Jordan, right? Making that last second shot as a freshman to win a national championship. Or Muhammad Ali. Or yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard. So many great things. Hope we get some more memories tonight. That was messed up. The snap wasn't very accurate. Lawrence had to spin, hands it to ETN, and they swarm him. Jacoby Stevens and Michael Divinity got in there. Yeah, the timing was off from the beginning. The snap was okay to Lawrence, but the execution of the handoff slowed ETN down and allowed that defense to get into the backfield. It's just, it, it just right there. It's messed up, slowed down, penetration. Lawrence gets in there, and then the linebackers are able to clean that up. LSU fans certainly sensing a momentum shift. You got Clemson behind the sticks, second and 14. Empty backfield, ETN rolled out, but Lawrence took a peek and then moves forward. Gets positive yards, it'll set up third and six. Seven yard touchdown run against Ohio State is a play we'll never forget. Ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Lawrence earlier in the quarter, which has just a minute 13 remaining now. Neither side has converted on third down yet. Some confusion on the LSU side as they try to get lined up. Lawrence under pressure, chased, 
flips it downfield and has Galloway the tight end for a first down across the 45, his second catch. Chris, you picked up on it, the confusion of that LSU secondary, and then they're in the fact that they were not able to get to Lawrence. There's his athletic ability, keeping the play alive, throws back against his body, but nobody there to pick up Galloway. 18-yard gain on third and six. And now darting forward is ETN. Galloway, a guy who had a positive PED test and missed an entire year. Imagine sitting that out. A serious mistake that he maintains was an innocent one. First game since October of 2018. Played last game against the Buckeyes, but didn't do very much at all, and already making an impact in the national championship in his first quarter. It's Jacoby Stevens, the junior safety for LSU that's down on the field. We've seen a team in Clemson that had a quiet assurance and then comes right from their quarterback and their coaching staff. They know what they're capable of in a championship stage, and they've come out very sharp in the early going. Yeah, they really have. I mean, the matchup really for the last two weeks was how will Joe Burrow's offense match up against this Clemson defense because Clemson has had a great history and tradition of being creative and, and confusing quarterbacks, confusing offensive linemen and pass protection. And uh, I think that will continue to be the game within the game to eventually find out who wins his football game. Stevens helped off. Gary Vincent Jr. is a quality safety. Comes in in his position. Second and four. Final 20 seconds of the quarter. Lawrence again running and weaving his way, showing his quick feet and his strength. It's a first down. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a quarterback draw. He's trying to maneuver his way and find a crease, which was tough to do. But, again, he's got great change of direction for a guy his size at 6'6", to be able to find a way to get that first down. Incredible. But Clemson has controlled the clock in the field position. They struck first. The lightning strike to Jamar Chase ties the game at 7. End of one here in New Orleans. Let's go to Kenny Main. Seven apiece start in the second quarter. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Clemson trying to add to its impressive trophy case. Trying to go back-to-back 15-0 seasons and win that CFP trophy. Not supposed to be able to do that in the playoff era. Remarkable. Trying to win it for the third time in four years. It'd be each time against a 14-0 heavyweight from the Southeastern Conference. Again, the second quarter. On the move with the LSU 42. Then Jay Dixon spelling ETN in the backfield. He fake it to Roger. They pop it to Rogers. It was a pop pass. Cleverly done. He gets some speed. Gets the corner for about six. They're going to continue to challenge those edges of the LSU defense. You know, if they're they're going to try to get pressure. Think about just the pass rush. That's a good way to keep them on is to make them have to respect that aspect. Whether you run ETN or you use a jet sweep, in that case, with Rodgers. Second and five. Lawrence has got it. Rolls out. Delivers a long throw over the head of Justin Ross. You see the arm strength, but it wasn't accurate. Yeah, it gives him that zone read feel and look for the defense, trying to bait them up, trying to get those linebackers and defensive backs to come up and try to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup he can win. And because Stingley was in great position, he tried to go back shoulder to get the ball to Ross where he can maybe have a chance, but obviously the ball sails on him. Good coverage there by the Tigers, by the LSU Tigers. you got to clarify today. <laughs> I know. Third and five. Rogers motioning across. Dixon is the back, and Lawrence is pressured. Flips the ball to Dixon at the last minute. Dangerous play, but it worked out. Caught, but three yards short of the marker at the 35. Caleb on chase on has had a great last two or three games. Relentless effort. He actually went to the ground, got back up, and still got this pass rush. On, on Lawrence before he's able to get it out just before his knee touches and get it out to Dixon. But boy, Chase on is right now a factor coming off the offense's left side against Carmen. Field goal team is on the field. 
BT Potter to try this from 52, which would be a career long. He's hit from 51 twice. LSU's field goal team ran on very late. The kick is away, and it is good from distance. As the sophomore delivers a new career long, a nine play, 40 yard drive, and it comes in back on top. He drove it low and had just enough. Hasn't been a great season for the young kicker, but he delivers on a big stage. 10-7, Tigers in orange. President and First Lady also attended LSU's victory at Alabama this year. And Congressman Steve Scalise on the right there looks ready for Mardi Gras. He does. Got the beads going. The de facto home team, though, once again behind. E.T. Potter now three for three on field goals beyond 50 yards this season. A nice smile from Dabo Sweeney afterward. He eschewed the long field goal try early. But Potter delivers there. He now kicks off. And it'll be another touchback. Time from plan to play. Talk to you about Northwestern Mutual, Kirk. Well, they went back to the drawing board. They said, you know, let's get the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands quickly. Uh, that, that was one of their answers, trying to find matchups, trying to find space, trying to get their athletes in space. Then they created a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Burrow knows he's going to chase all along. Keeps the safety in position, works his way from the left all the way to the right. Come up with a 70-yard drive. And that touchdown, they had 38 yards on 14 plays before that touchdown. They had 10 pass attempts, it netted 32 yards until the 52-yarder to chase. Got a hurry. Here comes pressure. Burrow scans and takes off. And he's in the clear and now slides down. He is a dangerous runner, really hurt Georgia in the SEC championship game. Watch the middle of this defense, watch how it clears out, and watch Joe Burrow feel Isaiah Simmons take Moss. Once he gets his eyes on Moss, you've got to have somebody there to account for the speed and the decisive process, the thought process of Joe Burrow. He's now run for 37 first downs this season. That is a big number. And he gets upfield so quickly when he makes his mind up to run the ball. Much quicker than he might appear on TV. When you watch him field level and defenses have to adjust, they are usually surprised. On the slant in traffic, it's Marshall, and they get about six. That's LSU this year. You're going to bring pressure with Isaiah Simmons. They're going to get the ball out fast and find one of those quick slants underneath, whether it's to two, who's had a quiet night, Justin Jefferson, or the Terrace Marshall, who comes up with that, big, uh, that uh, catch there on first and ten. Clemson again in that three down lineman look. One linebacker, seven DBs, and Burrow has to force the ball into coverage there. Simmons is all over Thaddeus Moss. They're keen on taking away the tight end tonight. They, they know that they have to, and they want to put Isaiah Simmons on the tight end because of the size and the natural matchup there. Does a good job working around with his arm. Body doesn't affect Moss for the PI, but he has, again, that great length to be able to get around him and knock it away. Buckus Award winner made it a long time to make an impact play against Ohio State. Finally had the pick. Third and four. Burrow pressured. Chased by Skulski. And has to just throw it away. So again, the linebacker blows the play up. It's fourth down. They're trying to get the ball out to Clyde Edwards. He lair on a, on a rug. But the pressure up the middle again. They're able to get home clean. Nobody's there. You go empty. You know you're going to get pressure. But because of the, the coverage downfield by the safety, Nolan Turner, there's nowhere to go. Even though LSU knew that was coming, they can't get separation on third down. Nowhere to go for Burrow to throw that ball. Look about a quarterback. It's on the FBS record pace. Almost 78% completions. Just 7 of 14 so far. And this time it's the LSU punt team's job to knock the ball dead deep. Racy McGrath, or McMath, I should say, is their top special teams gunner. He downs the ball at the four-yard line. The 
the College Football Playoff National Championship Game, presented by AT&T, is brought to you by Gatorade. For the athletes who give everything, nothing beats Gatorade. And Samsung QLED TV, bringing 4K to tonight's megacast for the first time ever. Unless you're winning championships on home soil, a familiar theme. Bill Beckham Jr., the Honey Badger, lots of legends on both sides here. LSU once beat Clemson in a Sugar Bowl in a perfect season. A seven-zip thriller. Kirk. <laughs> That's right. With Patrick Again, Peterson. Halfback pass. A minute up at halftime. CFB 150 celebrate by the 11 greatest players in the history of the sport will be saluted. That'll be a lot of fun. We saw LSU in that first quarter pinned inside their own 10 a couple of times. Unable to be very effective, get any traction. Let's see how... Trevor Lawrence handles it. Kobe Stevens, the safety, is back in the game. Lawrence on play action from the end zone. Fires a long throw. Ross makes the catch. He'll be wrestled down to the 28 by Fulton, but a first down. Boy, just a great route by Justin Ross. They're, they're going after Fulton. Inside move to the post, comes to the outside. Fulton never had a chance. Great eyes, great patience that time by Ross. Really sold that inside move to make Fulton bite on it before he cut back outside. He's been tough to beat this year. He's got a first-round NFL draft grade, does Fulton. 24-yard gain. And a handoff to Etienne. It bounces it. And scoots and still going. Etienne tight roping into LSU territory. Delpit finally forced him out. As good as Chason is as a pass rusher, he loses the edge, and his eyes are looking towards the quarterback, Lawrence. He's looking for a pass because Lawrence fakes the throw, and ETM went right by him. Got 29. He's got it again. ETM would love to match the feet of his little brother, Trevor, who scored a touchdown in this building. They lost the 3A state championship game, but Travis has never scored a touchdown in the Dome. Well, he, he's on his way. It looks like they're having a big night. They, they are having a hard time setting that edge. And just like that, Clemson inside their own five. And now plus territory to 36 of LSU. Big chunks of yardage. Linde Dixon on a reverse. It's Higgins. Lawrence throws a block. Higgins is off and running. Breaking tackles. Banging off people. Touchdown. Clemson stretches the lead. Wow. Six yards in the trickery. Now you get an aggressive defense, you counter that with the reverse. Look at Carmen leading the way. Look at Justin Ross, eight, with an outstanding block on the freshman Stingley. And then T. Higgins showing some toughness, lowers his shoulder and goes over the other corner, Fulton, to get work his way into the end zone. Some physicality from the long, lanky wide receiver at 6'4, 215. ATT byline cam shows you the touchdown. He kept his feet in bounds. Hey, you know, Kirk Clemson backed up. They don't care. Gets Ohio State. 94 and 99 yard touchdown drives. This one 96 yards in four plays. Just like that game winning drive was right. out in the desert. Shows the confidence they have in their quarterback with their play calling when they get pinned back like that. Already 263 total yards. LSU just 117, about half that on the one big play. Yeah, you, again, LSU is trying to, they've had a hard time being able to set, stop the edge. And so they're going to fly. Watch this defense fly to stop the potential run out of position. Carmen showing some athletic ability, but that block by Justin Ross is just outstanding. And love to see T. Higgins lower his shoulder. Trevor Lawrence kind of helped set that edge. Kind of a does his job, just stands in the way of the big defensive lineman. Well, Kirk, we wonder what would happen if this front-running LSU team, this offense that's been unstoppable, beats their match against a talented defense and falls behind. Dabo Sweeney's team is up by 10, and we're about to find out right now. I wish he'd start having some fun down there as a coach. <laughs> uh, for those in orange, that was a fun play. <laughs> Trickery, a bunch of guys doing their jobs, and Higgins finishing it with a physical move inside the, the five-yard line. And right away, you saw Dabo go down and work the defense, trying to get them to 
respond to that drive and touchdown put the put Clemson up LSU has not been behind by double digits all season long Another reminder Saturday night UFC 246 in Vegas Connor McGregor long awaited return to the act again against the Cowboy Donald Cerrone holds the UFC record for most wins prelims at 8 on ESPN main event at 10 Eastern but ESPN plus.com slash PPV see Dabba congratulating Justin Ross not T Higgins just for the block Burrow on the slant Chase has got it and first down out across the 40 how do you defend slants like that but you can't, all night you can't because what he's looking at is the linebackers coming up to stop the run so it gives him a passing lane on the run pass option Usually, you don't see a quarterback work to the back side. You've got to have inside leverage to take away those quick throws. That's just great execution, though. It's tough to stop. Justin Jefferson, we're used to seeing him catch those slams. Just one catch so far for negative one yard. Clemson brings the pressure. It's picked up, and now Burrow is launching downfield. And it's Chase again. He's got the catch. And again, fighting inside the five. Terrell was beaten again. He did save the touchdown. So if you're going to pressure Joe Burrow, it's just going to come down to do you get to him or not. Because if you're going to leave Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to continue to go downfield because of the confidence that they have that they will win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Edwards Hilaire on first and goal is stopped by Nolan Turner, the safety who invaded the backfield. So plays of 52 and 56 yards already to chase. That, that's their, that's one, another one of their answers to this pressure is, hey, if we get one-on-one, -on -one, let's get downfield and make a throw. Boy, Dabo Sweeney, a full sprint. That was like a 40-yard sprint to try it, to get that time out. The headset went flying. He saw something he didn't like down there as LSU went empty. <laughs> Dabo's still a guy, you, you wonder about pulling a hamstring, but he does sprint out. He, he gets good and warmed up. He does. He sprints onto the field full sprint. Maybe it's for those kind of opportunities. That was good 30 yards. Well, they were celebrating seconds ago, but you can see why, even though LSU is not used to being behind, no lead is safe. They dangerously have moved inside the five yard line. You know what's great about this game is the confidence that both coaches have in their quarterback and that they feel that we're going to continue to fight we're going to continue to be aggressive we're not going to get conservative we're not going to think oh boy they, they, they've got us off track Let, let's let's pull back a bit no 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 keep going full steam ahead keep believing in joe burrow keep believing in trevor lawrence and make this defense even with this system that's gotten us a bit off track make them have to respond to us this is great versus great. LSU is so tough to stop with their pass game inside the 10, but Clemson's been the ultimate red zone defense this year. It's what won him the game against Ohio State. Edwards Hilaire goes in motion. Burrow is flushed and chased and has to throw it away. Once again, it was Skalski trying to run the quarterback down. They're having a lot of success bringing these blitzes up the middle. Skalski's going to split. Right up the middle between the guard and the tackle. Nobody there. You can see a late reaction. Just being confused. You're moving your protection one way, and they bring more pressure the other. It's a pre-snap to post-snap look that is affecting the offensive line and the pass protection. Their great use of the timeout at this point as they slow down LSU's momentum. And now it's third and goal. Now they're really spreading them out, trying to create space and see who can win a one-on-one -on -one battle. One of those crucial plays early, and Adamo Sweeney says, games like this, it's just four or five plays that are going to decide the outcome, but you never know when they're going to happen. They happened in the second quarter of the semifinal. LSU takes a timeout before the third and goal. Joe Burrow told us he thought it would be, quote, a fun chess match tonight against Venables in that Clemson defense. Hasn't been as much fun as he thought, Kirk, but now after each side has taken a timeout, third and goal from the four. And, and now you're Joe Brady upstairs with Steve Insminger. You're, you're trying to find the matchup. Right? Are you going to Jamar Chase, who's up against Terrell? Are you trying to get it to Justin Jefferson, who's in his slot against Kayvon Wallace? Thaddeus Moss is out there. You've got a lot of different options.
Edwards Alaire far to the left. Tigers have yet to convert on third down tonight. One of those big four point plays. Burrow looking to run, escapes and scores. Well, they got the Fab Five playmakers, but you got to keep an eye on the quarterback, too. And they called the right thing. They expected an empty, the potential of him to run. He's done that a lot this year out of empty, especially down inside that five yard line. They brought the blitz, Isaiah Simmons and Skowski, but it's picked up by LSU's offensive line, and it opened up there for an easy touchdown for Burrow. We said chess match. That was that one goes to Brady and Burrow. Cade York, freshman kicker, who has missed four PATs on the season, even though he converts long field goals, cuts the lead to three again. Now here's here's the touch or the nice long run by Chase. He gets to the outside from that slot position. They've been moving him around a bit on that right side. Again, it's, that's the matchup. Terrell against Chase, he wins again, almost gets it into the end zone, but we get all the way down to a third down and goal, spread him all over the field. There's the blitz, Isaiah Simmons came up, but he's picked up nicely by Ed Ingram, the, the left guard who's in right now. He sets that, that block and makes it easy for Burrow to get to that end zone for the touchdown. So each of these prolific passing quarterbacks who are also dual threat guys have a rushing touchdown tonight. Burrow is a perfectionist, almost never satisfied no matter how monster a night that he has. Always feels like he can do more or better. Never enough. Just wants to keep raising the bar. He's being challenged tonight. He knows it. He knew that coming in, that there was a good chance for this scheme from Clemson to, to give his offense fits, but they're adjusting well, and they put themselves within three points. 75-yard drive. And... Travis Etienne, it comes from Jennings when he made his announcement and recruiting day. Give a jab at LSU fans who remember. Because both schools called Death Valley home, but Travis weighed in on that night. Just Where are you going for the next four years? Uh, I'll be taking my talents to the real Death Valley. The real Death Valley. Mm, those are fighting words. And the ugly side of social media, he did get some threats. Once this matchup was set, LSU fans began to harass his family. Travis still smiling through that and enjoying his experience. A lot of media attention for him this week. He's got the football. He's trying to bounce it. And he's going to run smack into a tackler there. Knocked down by Phillips. Maria? Well, Chris, you mentioned that hometown of Jennings, Louisiana, and that town had Clemson Day on Friday, despite the fact that they're right in the middle of LSU country. T-shirts were made to support Travis Etienne called Tigers Divided, and ultimately he's been called a ray of light in that city. But Travis said he's gone into a submarine, guys, leading into this game, blocking everything out, including mom, so he could be focused. You can't hear the static in a submarine, can you? Travis over 4,000 career rushing tonight and 5,000 all-purpose, and he's got it again. Kind of a sprint out handoff. He shows the strength, loses the helmet, and draws a flag at the end of the run. It'll move the ball near midfield. Yeah, I think seven, Grant Delpit, trying to make a tackle, got his hand in there on the face mask and ripped the helmet off of ETN, who we're just talking about. Personal what? foul, face mask, defense number seven. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Delpit, who's struggled at times with injuries this year, won the, the Thorpe Award. He's had a tough night so far. Chris. He has, and, and even without the penalty, it, look at the physicality. I mean, it, this kid runs hard, leads the nation in yards after contact per carry, and then you get the face mask on the back end of that. They add more 15 yards. Have the back of the helmet and ripped it off. Unless you crowd not in love with the call. Empty backfield, Lin J. Dixon to the right. And Lawrence is looking to the left. And now flips it over the middle, over the head of Rodgers, who takes a huge shot there from Stevens and is slow to get up. He took a shot right in the back. Stevens, who's sitting back there playing his deep safety spot. You know, it... That's just a, a big hit right there in the backside of, of Omari Rogers. Ball just sailed on Trevor Lawrence. He had him open. Hit him with his shoulder. You can see the whiplash effect on Rogers. Bill Lamagne is our rules expert in the booth. In his opinion, that's 
an okay, clean hit. The hit was fine. The timing was fine. He did not go in uh, with the, to the head neck area, didn't use the crown of his helmet. It's a clean hit. Siebens is a guy that's no stranger to penalties. He's the most penalized guy on LSU's defense, but that's kind of a dream play for a safety. Oh, yeah. See a receiver laid out, yeah. and you get a chance to yep. hammer him. Especially if you, may, if you hit him clean. Mario up and running off the field. Stevens, he talked to Dave Aranda, the defensive coordinator from LSU. He said, you know, he, he really helped set the tone emotionally for this defense. Veteran who bounces around and, and plays a lot of different positions. And this has been a fun one, hadn't it? Clemson's been very sharp. Defense controlled LSU early, but a couple of touchdowns. And now Lawrence and the Tigers right back to work in LSU territory. Dabo Sweeney way out on the field. Is to be ushered back to the sidelines. I don't know if ETN is going to motion back into the backfield, but they have him lined up. Lawrence fires to ETN in heavy traffic. And we'll see you all over that. Caleb on chase on mostly a pass rusher, but dropped into coverage that time. Yeah, I think the entire defense, when they saw nine out wide, it's an unusual look. I think it was an indicator that that ball is going to come out. Good chance it's going to go to ETN. Did a good job of leveraging the football, forcing him back inside. It's for Dave Aranda. We talk so much about Venables. Aranda can really crank up the pressure himself and has a great pass rusher in Chase On, who's right there. Third and nine. Quick off the edge, but Lawrence rolls away from the pressure, delivers an inaccurate throw to Higgins. And it's fourth down. Pressure, Divinity's back in the lineup. He gets off quick. No call as far as being a little early. He just had great quickness. He's got the time to make that throw, and I think he felt maybe a little bit hurried because in the blind side, he felt that that, that blitz was coming. Maybe hurried it a bit, but didn't have much of a chance at all for Lawrence. Divinity, a guy who missed nine games. Media reports of a fourth positive test for marijuana. He is so eager to make a play here in his hometown. He said all that pent-up anger from all those missed games was going to come out tonight, he hoped. After the punt, LSU once again with poor field position. Down by three. Hope for some mayhem to cap the season. Curtis Wilson and the All-State bus is here in New Orleans. What have you selected as tonight's mayhem moments? Well, you go back and look at that semifinal game where Ohio State was up 16. And, you know, I think the fact that Lawrence gets knocked out of the game and then comes back in the way he came back to be able to lead Clemson to that win, 16 carries, 107 yards. I think that was definitely a mayhem moment. Showed a different side of his athletic ability that night and toughness as well. LSU from the 13. Once again, Clemson crowding the line. Burrow trying to figure out where the pressure is coming from. It's picked up, and he fires across the middle. It was over the head of Jefferson. They struggled to involve the star receiver so far tonight. Yeah, they're, they're, they typically, with Jefferson, like to work the bender over the cross the middle. Bring a lot of receivers typically in front of that coverage. This time they didn't, but he's still able to get it over the outstretched arm of Tanner Muse, who in this 3-1-7 is almost playing a linebacker a lot of times tonight. They have him up closer to the line of scrimmage. Jefferson, the guy that has 102 catches this year, has not made an impact yet so far. Burrow pressured immediately, flushed, takes off. Chased by Simmons, but he angles for a first down. And there you see the dispect speed of the quarterback. Absolutely. And not only the speed, but the recognition. Where's Isaiah Simmons? Where is he? Where is he? He clears out. He's worried about those underneath throws, those quick slants. So you can't cover the quick slant and also account for the quarterback. So if you stay there with Burrow, he'll make the throw. If you take the pass away, he's going to run it. Burrow surveys and fires. And it's Chase again getting free, dragged down to the 45. Jefferson, I should say, finally makes an impact play. That's more like what you expect to see. Watch this open up. They take Marshall six underneath, 
opens up a beautiful throwing lane. That's what LSU's offense has been, the timing and the rhythm this season. Can't hold Jefferson down forever. Now Edward Solaire out of the backfield. Spins free of a tackle. Makes two more men miss and gets down inside the 35. Well, that, that, let's take a look at that. I, I thought he stepped out of bounds. What an incredible effort, though, by the talented back who's been doing that much of this season out of the backfield. Such a tough matchup. He's inbounds. Oh, did his hand maybe touch out of bounds? Nope. They run the play, and now it's Jefferson out of the flat. Stop and go. Lowers the shoulder. Hammers down inside the 15, and the Tigers' offense is rolling now. Yeah, they sure are. They're getting the ball out quickly. Joe Brady and Steve Insminger, their adjustment is to be attacking, getting the ball out quickly, and getting their receivers to win these one-on-one -on -one battles. And now the crowd boos because Clemson player Tyler Davis, the big almost 300-pound defensive tackle, is dropped to the field complaining of an apparent cramp. Well, they, they were going so fast. You know, I, that big play by Clyde Edwards, he lay out of the backfield. This is where they slipped Jordan Je uh, Jefferson. Justin Jefferson out, brought him from the left to the right. Nobody picks him up, and he is dynamic. Edward Zelaire, maybe the premier all-purpose back in the country. 50 catches coming in. And this is the play. Look, you see his hand touches. His feet stayed in, but the hand touched down. But they were going so fast, it didn't get uh, the replay booth enough time to be able to beep down and, and take another look at that. Gary McNan is the replay official from the Pac-12 here. Davis continues to get stretched out. Again, Niles Pinckney, the starting defensive tackle. The grad student who's played in four playoff games was in tears on the bench before the game. He has one more year left. He could come back, but be a tough way to end the career if you're Pinckney. And now Davis has to walk off. We'll see if that was there's Pinckney there, but you feel for him. Ankle injury is the issue. We'll see if uh, Davis's injury is broken the momentum here of LSU. Which LSU fans suspect was the motive all along. First down inside of six minutes to play. Ruth Aroraro, the true freshman from Lagos, Nigeria, originally with a fun name to say, filling in for Davis. Plenty of time for this pre snap chess match. And Burrow not the only one looking over. Receivers look over. Edward Gilaire looks over. Everybody on the same page. Burrow from the pocket, launches to the end zone, caught, touchdown chase! And LSU takes its first lead tonight. Man, can he drop a dime? I, I had a chance to sit down with Joe Burrow this week in Baton Rouge about this matchup, and I asked him about, boy, you throw a lot of balls that the receivers look covered, but you throw it and you, you score touchdowns. And he said, those defensive backs are not looking, they're open. I don't care if they're in phase or stride for stride with my receivers, I'm going to throw the ball. It's exactly what he does, he does here with Jamar Chase. He trusts his receiver to make the play Matched up against Terrell. It's it's good against good right here. Watch him hesitate and then work towards the fade. The timing of this. Wait, wait, wait. Almost as if he's going to block. Pretty decent coverage till the end. But Burrow knows. See, shows kind of flashes that he's going to block. Terrell didn't bite on it. Stays in pretty good coverage. But this is that timing between Joe Burrow and these wide receivers we've seen all year. Chase has caught his 19th and 20th touchdown receptions tonight. Took it 87 yards in six plays, barely two minutes, aided by the fact that Edward Zelaire touched his hand out of bounds, but they didn't buzz down in and time. That's right. How about Chase tonight? As he said, five catches, 147 yards, two touchdowns. He was confident, and he's backing it up. Sure is. We're not even to halftime. He's got 147 yards. And he's been going up against the best corner from Clemson and A.J. Terrell and winning that matchup.
His teammate Jefferson set the CFP single game record against Oklahoma with 227 receiving yards on 14 catches. Chase could chase that record down tonight if this keeps up. Now this season for every field goal and extra point made by the two schools, Allstate makes a contribution to the general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Tonight, Kirk, Trevor Lawrence, and Clemson takes over behind for the first time tonight. And the noise is back in the dome. These folks have spent the entire game on their feet. Wide snap. Corralled by Lawrence, who fires. And a hands catch made beautifully by T. Higgins. Those long arms. Wow. In front of Fulton. That was impressive. You know, T. Higgins had a rough night against Ohio State. Really, all the Clemson wide receivers had a rough night. And it's all hands. Nice catch there by T. Higgins, even as he comes down to the ground. They were challenged all year. They're going to take a peek at this. Take a peek, I guess, when he came to the surface. They're going to see if there was the ball moved when he came down with it. You mentioned Higgins knocked out in the first quarter. It was a concern over a concussion. They examined him at halftime, and he came back in the third quarter against Ohio State, made four catches. Ooh, what is the first part to touch down there? Looks like that foot was yeah, on the white. I see the left, the, the left foot if it gets down. I, yeah, boy, I thought it, the left foot never got down. He looked like I, he I was thought the be left, able to get yeah, it I down. thought the left yeah. foot would get down right there, and it never quite touched. You have to no, credit I, Fulton, though. His physical play yeah, forced the receiver out. Sure did. I just assumed the left foot came down, especially when we're watching it live. How about that toe? It somehow never touches the ground. Clemson fans are saying, wait a second, now you buzz down quickly for a replay review? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, they're going to bring this one back. Take away. Gain out to the 36, a 16 or 11 yard gain. It'll be second and 10. Yeah. Aaron McNana has the final say, but there are two folks in the command center for the Pac-12 back in the Bay Area also weighing in on these replay reviews tonight. LSU fans are convinced that that replay is definitive. Clemson receivers admitted, admitting to us at the Ohio State corners, Damon Arnett and Jeffrey Akuda both did a good job of jamming them at the line of scrimmage. They didn't have a great game, and they, they've been challenged these last couple weeks to try to step up in this game. Well, they've already spotted the ball back at the 25-yard line. We haven't got an official verdict from Chris Coit, but uh, here's a clue. It's a second down and 10 play. They were looking at two things. Did he maintain possession and did he get a foot which, down? Which foot touched down first? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like everybody's dialed in on what's going on. Even the Clemson offense is already kind of moving forward as if it's second and ten. They, they see where the ball has been placed. After review, the pass is incomplete. The receiver didn't maintain control going to the ground. It will be second down. Please reset the game clock to five minutes, 14 seconds, 5-14. We also don't think he got a foot inbounds. Thank you. Kirk, we talked about this battle on both sides between the talented receivers and the talented defensive backs. It's been interesting to watch so far. It really has. Like I said, I mean, they've been challenged to try to step up. LSU plays a lot of man-to-man, -man, very similar to the way Ohio State challenged them and, and had success, and they were determined to be able to get off the press and, and win. Shovel pass inside to Etienne, who navigates through traffic. Can't quite bust that tackle for a bigger gain. Stingley got him to the ground along with Delpit, but it's a first down. And Trevor Lawrence, nice patience, drawing Jacoby Stevens to him to be able to then flip it underneath to get ETN the ball and then have a chance to follow the, the guard, John Simpson, around. He kind of hid behind him and then accelerated for that first down. Things happen fast when number nine has the football in his hands. He fake it to him. Lawrence wanted a downfield shot. Takes a hit and launches an overthrow. That time Fulton was in coverage right there. No chance for Ross to make a play. And Rashard Lawrence hit the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence got in. He got off of the block of Simpson. And, and I really think 
that Lawrence feels that, and that's what forced him to get rid of that ball, not be able to really follow through, and it, affect the, it affected the accuracy of that throw. Lawrence hit on Lawrence, and now there's a man down deep in the LSU secondary, and it is Delpit who's down on one knee. You talk about the intensity of this game. Emotions can also have a physical effect. We see players cramp up. Man, this has been a very high energy back and forth first half. Everything you kind of would hope for. I mean, it, it, there's some challenging aspects of it early. Answers by, by LSU is the brain trust kind of figured out with Venables and how he's attacking and how to create some one-on-one -on -one matchups for Jamar Chase. How about Clemson? They got backed up inside their own five. They responded, put a touchdown. It's kind of the game that we had hoped to see. You hope it lasts like this all the way for four quarters where it's so competitive. We wondered how would LSU respond down by double digits for the first time this season. They responded with a couple of touchdowns and the offense on solid footing. Nothing's easy for Burrow tonight so far. No. But he's uh, responded. Chase has been the big weapon. Sure has. And you wonder what Brent Venables will do as an answer. Is he going to bracket Jamar Chase, which would then open it up for Jefferson, or it could open up for other. That's what makes LSU so good on offense, is if you try to take one guy away, they're going to find the other potential matchup that's a, a mismatch or an advantage to them. We're replacing the Thorpe Award winner is a true freshman, Mo Hampton from Memphis, number 14 in its safety, playing deep center field. Second and ten. Delayed handoff and ETN going nowhere. Glenn Logan, the big defensive end, grabbed him for a loss. What a great play by Glenn Logan right here. Works around the right guard, Cervinka. Look at that look, swim move, great hands. Keep in mind the size, 315 pounds, junior. Most consistent, the leader, really one of the great leaders of that defensive line. Not known for quickness in the interior of that defense, but there, Logan really showed it. They take the big bodies out, the 360-pounder Shelvin goes to the sidelines. You got just one true defensive lineman in there, along with the pass rusher, Chason. On third down, Lawrence rolls away from pressure, and it's incomplete. A high throw intended for Higgins, very well defended by Vincent Jr. And that was a high throw, but a, a catchable ball that Higgins can make. I mean, it, this is a long throw, good coverage, size advantage with Higgins. That's why they put. That's why Lawrence put it up high, where the 6'4 T Higgins can go up and over Vincent, who's 5'10, but tight coverage. Now let's see with that tackle for loss in that possession, messing up the Clemson drive, and now. 349 before halftime unless he's going to get the football back with a four-point lead It's a deep deep punt by Spires Zingley just lets it bounce and that punt team has been busy and effective for the Tigers tonight Once again LSU backed up inside the five well, We've been marveling at Jamar Chase all year the Belitnikov winner the timing the execution with Joe Burrow Slow start for this offense, but an adjustment is to get him isolated the way it has been all year. And it's been against Terrell. H.H. Terrell, the top corner, number eight. He's got great length, great athletic ability. But the last few series, unable to stay up with number one from LSU. See if Brent Venables will make adjustments to try to slow him down by trying to get a safety over top to help out. Tremendous punt, Kirk, by Spires, 58 yards. And LSU for the third time begins inside its own 10. Edwards Hilaire has got the football, evades a tackle, off and running. Barreling out toward the 30. Man, is he fun to watch. He sure is. And you better have your head up and a chance. You better have your head up and, and you better wrap up. Look at this move right there on A.J. Terrell, the corner who's trying to set that edge. Look at the suddenness, the quickness, the lateral quickness, the jump cut there by, by Edwards Hilaire. He gets upfield and picks up. Positive yards there on first and ten. Burrow against a four-man rush is still pressured. Can he escape? He bobbled the ball, recovered it, but it's a big loss of nine. Tyler Davis, the freshman, got in there. There's a miscommunication there with Joe Burrow and his receivers. So often in this system, you, you need to read the same coverage. You need to see exactly the same thing. And, and that time, Burrow wanted to go deep to his right. But Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who had Moshe, who lined up out there, was matched up, and he did not run the deep, the deep route. Burrow was surprised, had just ate it. 
So surprised he bobbled the ball. Yeah. Second sack for Clemson on second and 19. Burrow against a twisting pass rush. Inaccurate throw for Marshall. Third and a mile. Sometimes you don't even have to bring pressure. You don't have to blitz Skowski. You don't have to bring backers or safeties. You just use that twist to be able to try to affect the eyes and try to affect that offensive line's communication. Now because of that sack on first and 10, look at this, third and 19. Good luck against the Venables defense. Yeah. Do they bring pressure? And where is it going to come from? Skowski's had a lot of success on third downs, getting home. Here he is on the left edge, number 47. Oh, there were 11 Clemson Tiger defenders close to the line on third and 19, so they call a timeout. Seconds. Chess match. And then eight guy, eight guys within the box, all capable of blitzing. And you're 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 looking at Joe Burrow, and he's looking at that defense, and he's trying to set that protection. And it's a little bit of a guessing game on trying to figure out where that pressure might come from. And then again, they could show it and then just bail and get out of it. And Nick Saban said in the pregame, he thought the key which defense could affect the opposing quarterback the most. Both defenses have been successful. Nick will join Reese and Desmond, the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Just 229 away. That was the key for everybody really coming in is what can you do to slow down? You're looking at a quarterback and Joe Burrow who's more than likely going to be the first pick overall this year and Trevor Lawrence who's going to be the first pick next year. Somebody better slow these guys down, right? Saban, of course, who won a championship in this building for LSU and against LSU and Alabama. Joe went over, put the headset on, probably talked to Joe Brady to get a feel here on third down. We'll see that often in a timeout, too. No. It's only a three-man rush, and Burrow launches downfield, and Marshall has interfered, and that's going to give LSU a first down. Darian Kendrick was beaten and got there very early. Remember we talked about how they're going to show potentially pressure, and then they could come out of it? Simmons, Muse, they look like they're showing Defense, it, and then they get one. out of it at the end. They penalty. rush three Automatic and just down. drop eight. He's got eight guys in coverage. Burrow still challenges them with a ball that's underthrown, and that's really what forced Kendrick to run into, into Marshall. Man, Kirk, there are a few things that sting a defense more than a pass interference penalty on third and 19. On an underthrown ball with eight in coverage. So the automatic first down moves the ball to the 36 LSU with one timeout remaining and Venable says dad gummit we're almost off the field against these guys now LSU which will get the ball to start the second half has a chance to add to the lead before the break Lake clock running down three two just got it snapped Three-man rush, ball gets out. And Chase again hurts Clemson. First down inside Clemson territory. You, you press them, you get up tight, they're gonna go by you for a touchdown. You drop, you show press and drop, they're gonna get you're gonna give them space. It, it's pitch and catch. It's very simple for him to find that space and make that quick slant throw. Crank the tempo. Off play action. Burrow looking for a downfield shot. It wasn't there, but he darts forward. Skalski grabs him after a short gain. A good coverage that time by A.J. Terrell downfield. He wanted to go, go with tempo, try to catch Terrell napping, see him looking left. He wants to unload that down the left sideline the way he has all year to Jamar Chase. And that because of that coverage by Terrell, they eventually get to Burrow. Man, Kirk, this possession feels really important. Sure does. LSU on top, getting the ball again to yeah. start the third quarter right. here. The middle eight, Dabo Sweeney talks about it, the last four and first four minutes of each half. Clemson has owned that historically. LSU trying to change that. Burrow worms his way free. How did he not get sacked? He actually got about three yards out of the play. But the flexibility within this 3-1-7, you're guessing really where this pressure is coming from. And they're, they're confusing the offensive line. Only problem is they're getting there, but they're not bringing Joe Burrow down. He gets positive yards instead of taking that deep sack. And now it's third and five instead of third and nine or ten. More manageable, but they're still just... One for five on third down tonight. Chase, slot to the right. 
Here comes the pressure. Burrow flips it out, and it is Chase making a catch, banging off a tackler for Jefferson. It's a first down again. So Justin Jefferson has begun to get involved now. Well, as soon as he saw that Jefferson has a chance out here against Skowski, he wants that matchup right there. It's exactly what he found. He's able to make that throw. Across the middle, pass incomplete. Skowski was in coverage, tipped it, trying to find Marshall. Skowski is a great linebacker, a leader, inspires this defense, helps set the tone. Having a big night tonight. They've been bringing him a lot on pressure, but when he's underneath in coverage, he's he's if there's space, that's what Burrow wants to try to exploit. 28 seconds. LSU still with the timeout. On second and ten, Burrow does not want to take a sack at this position of the field, just flips it way out of bounds. Yeah, Third down now. And the one timeout with 21 seconds. This is not an offense that typically thinks, oh, let, you know, let's settle for a field goal. Let's get it in the middle of the field. You know, until they have to settle for a field goal, they are attacking. That's been their trademark all year with this new offense that Steve Insminger and Joe Brady have called. Don't be surprised, even on third down, if they try to find a matchup and take a shot. If they settle for a field goal attempt, it would be from 52, which would equal the long of freshman Cade York. They clock at three. And LSU did not want to have to do it, but now, Kirk, they spend their final timeout. Burrow was taking too long to get things adjusted there. Yeah, he, he's, he's mad, too. I think he got mad. That LSU and it ended up being the head coach, Coach O, called a timeout. He was worried that the play clock, he couldn't afford another five yards here at no. the end, and you're trying to stay in field goal range. And Joe Burrow had a reaction as if, you know, slammed the ball in his hands as if he, as if he was frustrated with the sideline. I think the, Coach O was frustrated there, too. I think he was. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't really care for that response. They ended up using their last timeout, yeah. which is critical. I know they do a good job of getting the ball out. But Clemson's done a pretty good job of getting pressure and confusing the offensive line with the pre-snap to post-snap look. Burning that timeout certainly has to impact the play call. Absolutely. They're stopped short of a first down. They would really have to hustle the field goal team out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about getting a first down and, and hoping that the clock stops getting out of bounds or, as you said, being in hurry-up mode if they come up short and stay in bounds. The field goal team poised to run out unless Burrow can gain 10 yards here. So I think he takes a shot right here. Burrow takes off and gets in the clear. Gets a block. Makes a cut and is knocked out at the five. That's gutsy without a timeout, but it works. It sure is. He, he followed the center's block. They clear out again to take advantage of his athletic ability. Nobody in the middle after that block by the center, Cushionberry. And boy, he can accelerate, you know, between he and Lawrence, they're known for their ability to throw, but both can hurt you if you forget about their legs. A 29 yard run. Again, no timeouts, first and goal, 14 seconds. Burrow's got that internal clock. If he's throwing, it's out in less than 2.5. Here comes pressure. Gets it out quickly. Touchdown! Thaddeus Moss just standing still. And LSU stretches the lead before halftime. 95-yard touchdown drive. And Moss, one of his best buddies on the team. Well, they gave him just enough time to get that ball out. He took a shot by Skowski. You can see the grimace and pain. He paid the price for his 58th touchdown pass of the season. And Randy Moss, just an LSU fan, a proud dad tonight, but he's pumped up. Third touchdown of the season for Moss and an 11-point LSU lead after they were down 10. And they get the ball, as you said, to start the second half. You can see the medics are checking out Joe Burrow. Here's the big run. Third down and 10, what are you going to go with? Look at the blocks downfield. He's pointing, trying to get it one more block to try to get it into the end zone and wisely steps out of bounds. And then this is a great 
This is a great call. Once they get inside the red zone, a heck of a call by the LSU Brain Trust. They found a matchup. He recognizes bl a blitz right here on the inside. And what a great job by Moss of instead of taking that into the corner, he settles down to give Burrow, who just gets it off, a chance to throw it into that hole in the zone. He's got the flag jacket, but Skalski is the hardest hitter in this defense. You know, his dad, who was a linebacker, told him, son, when you hit a fo another player, you make them feel you. And he does. Sure did. Yeah. Burrow. What a route by Moss. You couldn't see it there, Chris, but he was going to go into the corner, recognize that Kendrick was in zone, and just settle, settle down. Great recognition by the tight end. So LSU, a 21-point run. They've scored touchdowns on their last three possessions. This gives you a really good feel and a look for this. Instead of continuing out here, he just settles. He sees that, settles, and Joe Burrow saw the same thing. That's what you have when you have two best friends. <laughs> they see the same thing, and instead of throwing that into the corner, he runs the right route, and Joe Burrow puts it right on the money. And now Cole Brennan has been caught. Burrow with three touchdown passes in the first half. Not quite the seven that he had in the first half against Oklahoma, but new FBS record, and you'd like his chances of owning it outright before this one is done. So Trevor Lawrence, a kneel down. Thumbs' defense was so dominant early. You think we're doing a great job on Joe Burrow. He's thrown for 270. He's run for 55, and the lead is 11. 28 points, 359 yards, tracking towards over 700 yards of offense and 56 points. Now, how would LSU respond? Well, they have answered strongly, and here's Ed Orgeron with Tom Rinaldi. Ed, from down double digits first time this season to up double digits, what changed? Great game. You know, we had some bad field position at the beginning. When we started clicking on offense, we figured out what they were going to do. Now we're moving to football. We had some critical stops with our defense. This is a heck of a football game. How do you build on this momentum? We, got, we, we, we get the ball in the second half. We've got to go down the field. We've got to score. We've got to stop them. We've got to keep on playing for 60 minutes. We knew it was going to be like this in the championship game. Appreciate it, Ed. Go Tigers. Let's go to Maria. Thanks, Tom. Well, Coach, LSU with the score going into halftime. What would be the key to containing the Tigers to be back out of the locker room? Well, first of all, really sloppy finish there. Third and 19, and we get a bad P.I. Just not playing smart right now. They, they've made, listen, they're going to make some plays. A couple of throws uh, to number one were just great plays. They got great players. They had pretty good position. You know, but just, just the dumb stuff, man. Really disappointed in how we finished, and especially right there on the third and 19. We just got to play smarter, you know, and and, uh, and then we didn't play. I thought we had two bad possessions offensively. So get in here. Let's settle down. It's a long time. This is going to be a this is going to be a battle uh, in the second half. We've got two great teams, and uh, you know right now they're up. See how we can finish. Thanks, coach. You got it. There's emergency because comes the defense going to be on the field, trying to avoid this lead from getting any larger. LSU, 269 yards of offense in the second quarter. Bayou Bengals up by 11 at halftime. Coming up next, the Mercedes-Benz halftime report. Set for the second half. LSU in a 21 zip run up by 11. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. LSU will get the football first in the third quarter after being stymied earlier. Burrow got it going. Four touchdowns in the last five possessions. But Burrow did take a big hit from the hardest hitter on Clemson's defense. James Skalski, you see that left arm pinned against his side. Wincing in obvious pain. Didn't want to be touched by the trainers. So keep away from me. Kirk, he didn't spend much time in the locker room. Came back and rode the bike for a lot of halftime to try to stay loose. Yeah, I haven't seen that very often at halftime. A quarterback, starting quarterback comes out trying to stay loose. It looked like a shot in that rib area where it can be very, very painful. But you're right. What an incredible turnaround of events from the way this game started where Venables was confusing Burrow, and especially his offensive line. In these last four or five possessions, they got right back on track and it really shown to be the LSU offense we've seen most of the year. Burrow is back up on his feet throwing after we saw him on the bike, and Tom Rinaldi has more from the LSU sideline. As you said, Kirk, how rare is it to see the starting quarterback come out with more than 10 minutes left after halftime, get on the bike, as you mentioned, for about three minutes. What happened took that hard shot on the last touchdown drive just before the end of the half 
on his way coming off the field told teammates, Chris, don't touch me, don't touch me. Certainly, when knocked out of him, soreness in that rib area. Got off the bike, went through an extended motion, if you will, seeing how he was reacting to throwing the passes on the field. Grimacing slightly will certainly be something to look out for. Also, standout safety Grant Delpit, he was in the locker room before the half ended. Hamstring on the left. We'll have to see how that holds up. All right, thank you, Tom. LSU, the Capital One rewarding performance. More yards against Clemson in the second quarter than they give up in a game, Kirk. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and it, boy, a great job of seeing his decision making and ability to make throws to these gifted receivers. Big thing in that first half with the adjustment, getting him out in, in, in the empty where he can throw, where he can run the football. Incredible accuracy downfield where Jamar Chase has been winning one on one. And then the ability to see that and the toughness that Tom just alluded to to take that hit after he made that great throw for a touchdown. Burrow looking to throw in the first play, launches for Moss, but it's over his head. See the way they started if you're just tuning in. Look at those first three drives. Just could not get anything going. And Coach O referenced this with Tom Rinaldi. They're pinned back inside their own 10 yard line in the first few drives, but Brent Venables put a package together to confuse them. And boy, have they settled in, made in game adjustments, and given Burrow and his receivers a chance to make a lot of plays. Jefferson got off to a slow start, but he's gotten into the act. Four catches. Got Chase in the backfield. The wrinkle they've been showing the last couple of games. Yeah. He flares out, but he fired to the other side, and the catch is made by Moss. He'll be a few yards short of a first down. You know, you might you might ask why would they move Clyde edwards hilaire who's such an effective running back, out as a wide receiver and and move the, the top receiver into the backfield. And, and again, it's all about giving a, a, a different look, creating some potential confusion, and eventually creating a matchup maybe with Jamar Chase against a linebacker one-on-one -on -one coming out of the backfield. Right away, a big play in the third quarter as Clemson tries to get off the field and prevent Burrow from stretching this double-digit lead. Show, showing a lot of pressure. That's what Burrow looks over, gets confirmation, adjusts some of the receivers. Three are bunched to the right. Here comes the blitz. Burrow is going to be swarmed. They didn't pick it up, but he didn't make a quick enough decision. And that's a big sack for Clemson. Logan Rudolph and Skalski. Yeah, Cushenberry, the, the center, has a tough decision to make because he's got Tyler Davis matched up against him here, and then you got Skalski coming there. He's, he can't take both. A guard's not there to help him. He's got to let one of them go, and eventually they actually both get to Joe Burrow there on that third down. Clemson now with 45 sacks on the season. Five straight years of 40 plus sacks. They got three tonight. And there's a flag, and the punt is bounding down to the 10 yard line. But they interfered with the returner. It'll improve Clemson's field position. You can't really overstate how crucial that was to stop the bleeding if you're Venables in the Clemson with defense. The opportunity to catch a kick, kicking team number 13. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. I mean, they First believe down. in their comeback ability. Oh, yeah. You go down 18, it's something else. Maria? Well, Chris, Dabo Sweeney saying coming out of the locker room, his message was simple to his team, that we've been here before. Remember, it was just a game ago that they were down by 16 against Ohio State. He reminded them that it's a 60-minute game, so just continue to play and make the plays that are your job. And that's the plan Clemson has coming out of the locker room, guys. Well, thank you, Maria. That's a costly penalty on John Trey Kirkland, the Backup receiver on special teams because Lawrence takes over exactly at midfield. And ETN tries the left side. Only about a two yard gain. You know, Clemson typically makes great adjustments at halftime. In fact, if you look at the last three playoff games that Clemson has played in, they've only allowed the seven points. They have more sacks than they've given up points in those three games. So, you know. Their defense can keep them in this game. It's exactly how they needed to start this second half, getting that three and out. And now they've got great field position. See if they can capitalize. Lawrence making the adjustments on second and eight. There's a matchup he can win. 
Each in in motion. Lawrence is looking across the middle, and it is the matchup, Kirk, that you pointed out. A catch by Higgins, who hasn't been active enough so far. He took a big hit there by the safety. Delpit coming up, trying to separate the football. I circled that because that's a matchup that they feel good about. Higgins, you see that outside leverage. It opens up that quick slant, and there's that, boy, a big hit right in that thigh area of Higgins, who goes down. Delpit who is an accomplished center fielder, but has played closer to the line of scrimmage to make impact plays like that this season. He struggled with injuries throughout. And the good news is that Higgins is up and walking off. You and I were talking at halftime, and I, I, I noticed it just looking at all the different stats. One that really stuck out to me was I, I thought T. Higgins had a chance to have a big night tonight against the style of coverage that these corners play with outside leverage. Only had one reception. I know he had the reverse for the touchdown, but one reception Again, with your best receiver against man-to-man, -man, he's got to win this second half to get separation. Plenty of time on first down. Yet another pre-snap chess match. Lawrence, and they pick up the pressure. Tries to scramble free. They grab his face mask. It'll be an LSU penalty. He's going to be knocked down at the 30, and then it'll move to 15 yards closer to the goal line. Chason grabbed the mask. Yeah, Chason trying to, how about the protection by that offensive line? It was very good coverage downfield. Chason just trying to get his arm to try to affect Trevor Lawrence and clearly grabs a hold Personal of that face foul. mask. Face mask, defense number 18. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. So two crucial penalties by LSU. One interfering with the punt returner, and now that personal foul. Clemson could have asked for a better start in the third there, quarter. There are a lot of people that have watched LSU this year and watched the way that first half ended and thought, wow, they scored at the end of the first half. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. There's a chance they go up 35-17. That's a big hole to try to come back on against Joe Burrow. They get a three and out. Now, Inside the red zone, they've got to score a touchdown here to get it to 28-24. ETN. Powerful run down inside the 10. Ran into Patrick Queen, the linebacker. I love watching him run. Came in as a freshman from the state of Louisiana. Just, I think all of us that watched him that first year said, wow, look at his acceleration. This guy, his first two or three steps can go by people. And his second year, he got a little bigger. And then his third year, he's become more patient and got more powerful in his lower half. He run through those arm tackles. He's got it again. Running through tackles again. It'll be first and goal. Clemson down at the three. Impressed by that offensive line here on this drive. They didn't think they could have a lot of success because of the mass of that interior. But here, these last couple of plays, boy, they're challenging the interior of LSU's defense, running right at them. ETN again. Muscles, touchdown, Clemson. And they slice into the lead. A perfect start for the second half for the Tigers. You're a Clemson fan. That's exactly what you wanted to see. The Clemson offense looks like it's going to maybe stay on the field. Let's make sure he got in, broke the plane before he touched the his knee touch. Looked like he definitely got across. They're putting the ball in the left hash. There's the AT&T pylon cam as they continue to make sure he broke the plane. Looks like he did. So they'll go for two to cut it to a three-point game. Yeah, a lot of coaches believe in analytics. Sometimes we scratch our heads as fans thinking, what in the heck, it's so early. Why are they doing this? But these new analytics tell coaches to do some things like this. Lawrence ducks under pressure, delivers, caught. Amiri Rogers has got it. And that's their first successful two-point conversion. And it is suddenly a three-point game. 50-yard drive after the penalty and the punt in six plays, 237. Impressive. In the locker room, hoping that the defense, I'm sure, is able to get a stop. They do. They get the ball back to Trevor Lawrence with that great foot position. Offensive line, quarterback, receivers in the back, ETN. A perfect first drive for Clemson.
Hi, I'm Bob New Orleans. Goodyear providing the aerial coverage, introducing the newest honorary member of the College Football Hall of Fame, the Goodyear Blimp. Goodyear, more driven. And coming up, don't miss an exclusive look at Marvel Studios' new movie, Black Widow, due in May. And this has changed, Kirk, the complexion here. I think the LSU faithful with that big lead, their offense is rolling, thought, we got this. Yeah. But all of a sudden, Clemson, the comeback Kings two weeks ago against Ohio State, have drawn within three, two major penalties by LSU, aiding that last drive, of course. How about Joe Burrow with Joe Brady? Look at all these quarterbacks that they've gone up against, just knocking them out, dodgeball yeah, style. Two fell down. <laughs> yeah, one after Rom another. Hurts. One guy left. Well, they haven't knocked over Lawrence yet, that's for sure. <laughs> dodgeball star Vince Vaughn is in the house. He's kind of adopted LSU. He was there at the SEC championship sure game. Has. Big Watch college football fan. Tiger sideline. Burrow back to work now. The lead suddenly just three. Bringing those tight splits, condensed formation here on first and ten. All 22 guys close to each other. Burrow flushed again, sacked for a fourth time. Isaiah Simmons got him. When you bring in tight receivers, look how many bodies you have inside this area right here. That's a lot of different guys that potentially can blitz. They bring Tanner Muse. Isaiah Simmons is the one who eventually gets home. When they brought him off the edge, he's been able to get there, and he has great feel as a safety of not just when to blitz, but just that instincts to get to the quarterback. Second and 15. Great part about the spread is it makes it easier to identify where the pressure is coming from. I wonder if Brady's going to shelve Kirk that bunch formation. Yeah, and, and again, this this three man front gives Brent Venables a lot of different looks. Chase off and running again. They get a big chunk of yardage, beating Kendrick and setting up a third and short now. Well, Kendrick ends up backing out and creating space. And again, to me, that that's the disaster. That's a disaster when you give Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson room underneath. You've got to you got to mix it up. I understand it, but boy, it, it, with Burrow and those receivers underneath, when they have space, they are lethal. Crucial third down here. So they're tightened up with their coverage, obviously, third and short, across the board. Burrow gets it out, almost intercepted. Oh, Nolan Turner, who made the clinching pick against Ohio State, jumped the route, had the ball in his hands. Not only did he jump the route, Chris, but he had to work around a pick. They, they saw man to man. Watch how he works around that pick and then gets his eyes up, anticipating the football. Great job of working around traffic, jumping the route. And if he comes up with that catch, Turner could potentially be a hero again. Remember the hero against the Buckeyes with the, the clinching interception. Yeah, he was burned all night, but made the clinching pick when Olave fell down in the end zone. And the punt from Von Rosenberg bounces out of bounds. So Clemson gets the football back, down just three. You're watching the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. The college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T is brought to you by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, Capital One, what's in your wallet, and the Nachos Party Pack from Taco Bell. It's hard to match this building for magical moments in a variety of sports. Brady's first Super Bowl here. Michael Jordan first announcing himself as a superstar, hitting the shot as a freshman. Carmelo Anthony and Syracuse won a title in here. Key Smart beat Syracuse. Wow. The Chris Webber timeout. And look at the two fights. Muhammad Ali regained the title in a rematch against Spinks. And Leonard frustrated Duran, who eventually said no moss in this building. Nobody's saying no moss here tonight. <laughs> no. That's incredible. What's your what's your, your the one that sticks out to you the most? Muhammad Ali? That would be right up there. Yeah. Wish I'd been here that night. <laughs> this heavyweight fight, Clemson has scored the first eight points, and they go to number eight, Justin Ross, who's wrestled out, but it's a first down near the 30. I love you when you get the athletic 
Trevor Lawrence out on the edge where he's got a levels concept, a deep uh, intermediate and an underneath throw. It gives him the option to run it or throw it. Makes a nice throw there on first and ten. And the Tigers thought they were going to crank the tempo, slow things down and check for the cards on the sidelines. I mean, they were hitting the tight end in the first half. Brennan Galloway, when they'd flex him out like this, that's something they'll probably go back to at some point in the second half. Play action. Zipped on the slant. Ball tipped. Juggled. Is the catch made? Yes. Joseph Ngata made it look difficult, but he did collect it. What? Now they're saying incomplete. Oh, really? I thought it, I, that ball must have hit off the ground because it ended up in his arms. They're going after Fulton. They, they've not gone after Stingley on the other side, the freshman. But they have been attacking and got it. I, I, I still can't see where it hit the ground there. I'm not sure it did. They're not buzzing down, so it's second and ten. Now, now they will. Now they are. The pass is under review. Yeah, it hit the hands, the knee. I don't think it hit the ground, though. See the umpire trying to look around bodies to get a closer look. Why? Oh, it did. There it is. Yep. Take it back. It did deflect off the ground. Jacoby Stevens in coverage there. So that umpire who leaned around to get a look at that did make a correct call. Good call by the official. You're right. And I, as I said, they're going after Christian Fulton. After and, review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Second down. Whether it's been T. Higgins. Or in Ghana, in this case, the, the freshman, they'd like that matchup against one. That's a reversal. Typically, teams have really gone after Derek Stingley more than they have Fulton. Well, he's gained quite a reputation as a freshman with six interceptions. He sure has. Especially the way he played late in the year. But Fulton typically has no picnic to go after no. either. No. Second and ten. Confusion again with Stevens and Queen. Rodgers came in motion. They flip it back to ETN, who gets a block and a short gain. I tell you, if Justin Ross makes a block there on Patrick Queen, who ended up making the tackle, that's a touchdown. There's nobody left to be able to slow down and catch up to ETN. Eight white saves the day. He was patient. He waited. Catches him from behind. And it was a missed block by Justin Ross. So that's, as I said, a big touchdown for the Tigers. Looks like Cervenka might have shoved the player in the back and gotten away with an illegal block. Third and seven. Lawrence flips it high off the hands. And they dive for it. Incomplete. Vincent came in diving, trying to hope for a pick off the carom. But it's fourth down. Well, they're expecting man-to-man, -man, so they're going to go with a crosser. But they, they kind of disguise it, sit back and play zone. And once that ball's in the air in the middle of the defense, I mean, that's a, that's a dream for LSU. Somehow that ball hits the ground before the safety. The nickelback, Vincent, can come up with a pick. So each quarterback that had a long streak without interception has had a close call tonight. No picks for Trevor Lawrence since week eight. Well over 200 attempts. Not as good as most of Spire's earlier punts, and Stingley comes up to make a fair catch at the 32-yard line. 36-yard punt. LSU back to work up by three still. Well, the first half began with Joe Burrow and LSU going three and out twice. That's exactly the yeah. way the second half has begun. Yeah, and Clemson's really cranked up the pressure, being more aggressive, trying to get to Joe Burrow before he can get them, especially with throws downfield. And Joe's looked a little irritated coming off the field. You know, he, we mentioned how he was on a bike at halftime, and he's showing a little bit of frustration, not quite looking the same as of right now coming into this drive. wonder if the pain from that shot that he took Muskalski is playing a part in that. Been sacked four times now and hit a bunch. Hesitation. And Burrow, if he is hurting, doesn't show it there as he picks up 10 with the scamper. Tom? Kirk, I do think you pick up on something, whether it's irritation or as Chris suggested, pain. You could certainly see that Joe Burrow's gone down a little more readily. I know it's been the teeth of the rush, but he has not played. That run is by far the most demonstrative thing he's done in this half. A play action. Launching downfield. One more time to chase. It was over his head. 
LSU fans wanted a flag, but that's real uncatchable. So they run the football with the quarterback, even though he's not feeling 100%. They come right back to a shot downfield, and Chase has, has a couple steps there on Kendrick, who's one-on-one -on -one without a safety over the top. He grabs onto him, and it looks like pass interference, but I agree with you, Chris. The ball was past him once he grabbed onto him. So second and ten. Skalski lurking, moving around right behind the nose tackle. Got to hurry. And once again, the movement yeah. of Venable's Play defense game, causing offense. some hesitation and confusion. And that cost him five yards. T. Higgins going into the locker room. Remember, he took that shot. Looked like in the, the, the thigh area going into their locker room to check him out. I'm with you, Chris, that all that movement by Skalski, other guys looking over LSU, looking over to get the check. There's a lot, a lot going on for both sides and cost him five yards. Every defensive coach in the SEC said the same thing. You better change it up. Give him different looks. High formation defense and an option straight run from Burrow showing that the play callers aren't terribly concerned about the quarterback's health. Not much of a gain there. It'll be third and long. On the opening segment of, this, of tonight's uh, game, I said that Joe Burrow plays quarterback like a middle linebacker. You know, he was a two-star recruit, not heavily recruited. He said he played defense safety most of his younger career. So he doesn't mind the physicality. And even though he's hurting, he's not going to back down. He's the first offensive guy in the family. His dad and older brothers yeah. were both defensive players at Nebraska. Here we go. Let's see how they try to get pressure. Only one defensive lineman, but Skalski comes streaming through. Now, can Chase get there? Yes, he can. Sidesteps attacker. He's got a convoy still running down into the red zone. An enormous conversion for LSU. Watch why it's so important to be a good athlete as an offensive lineman. A left tackle. Keep an eye on Charles in the block and how he kind of just turns the defender to the inside and gives Chase the boundary. Gives him a chance to get outside to use his speed. LSU was deadly in the red zone. Three red zone trips, three touchdowns in the first half. Wow, does Jefferson pay the price as Skalski is laying the lumber tonight. Big hit there, but great focus and concentration by Jefferson, who is very sure-handed. All these receivers catch the ball with their hands. You see his eyes peeking, knowing that he was about to get hit, but did a good job turning and protecting the football. Again, we knew it was going to be strength on strength. They are so precise, so sophisticated down here. Clemson is so stout and stingy in the red zone. They are going to stop and review whether or not Skalski targeted in that hit against Jefferson. So this is a hugely important review. Skalski, an incredibly important part of the defense. And we'll bring in Bill Lamagne. The crown of the helmet was lowered on Jefferson, Bill. What, what is your opinion of this hit? If I were on the field or in the replay booth, he's lowered the helmet, forcible contact. It's crown of the helmet. This is a targeting call. That's exactly what we saw with Ohio State against Clemson when Sean Wade lowered his head and used the crown of his helmet, even though it's a it's a different player. Here's a receiver, but it's the same principle using that crown of the helmet. Right, and he's a, he's made the catch, so he's not defenseless anymore. So only crown of the helmet applies. Right, and the crown is used here, forcible. And for the fans, Bill, it doesn't matter if it's helmet to helmet when it comes to the crown. It doesn't matter where the I, defender hits. Exactly. I don't have to hit you in the head. Technically, from your head to your toes, I cannot basically spear you. Skalski, an old school linebacker, still wears that neck brace. And we said that they mean it as a compliment when he hits you. It's like he's got concrete in his helmet. And this is a, an enormous decision. If they flag him for targeting and take well, him off the field. It's Jake Venables, Brent son, Brent's After son review, comes into play. Personal foul, targeting, defense number 47. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Skalski with is disbelief. for the remainder of the game. That's the leader. That's the glue to that front. And a big part of how they've tried to defend tonight. He's shell-shocked. 
has to leave the field, go to the locker room. Targeting rule is controversial. Many fans just hate it. But that, just like Sean Wade's hit on Lawrence, is the letter of the rule. And Brent Venables, as we said, Jake Venables, who has played quite a bit this year, physical linebacker. But it's not just the physicality. It's the knowledge of the scheme that Skowski provided that now Venables will have to understand and get lined up and, and be blitzing and be effective. First and goal, an immediate test for this Tigers defense, minus their leader. Burrow, back pedals, flips it far side, catch made, Moss! Is he in? No signal. Touchdown! For a second time, the tight end has found the end zone. And momentum swings back to the purple and gold. Now, Jamar Chase did a good job. Now, you got to be careful on these picks. You got to make it look like you're running around. Does a nice job of getting in the way of Kendrick to open up that flat for the tight end, Moss. And Thaddeus Moss equals his season total of touchdowns of two with two tonight. Is his foot out of bounds before that ball broke the plane? They have to look on their quad box at two different replays and coordinate it. Here is the foot out. Ball difficult to say, Bill. What, what is your take after seeing both of these angles? Before the foot's down, I've got the ball breaking the plane of the goal line. We have a touchdown. And you've got Skalski heading to the locker room. Boy, what an enormous last two minutes of this game. This is what Bill is referring to before he steps out. The ball's extended as it break the plane. Here's a look from the AT&T pylon cam. Really You'll see the foot there. Is under review. Pylon cam got wiped out by two players there. There's the foot out. Difficult to say with certainty. So unless they can find irrefutable evidence that that wasn't a touchdown, that call would stand. And that is not just a, a touchdown that will extend LSU's lead pending the PAT back to double digits, but now without Skalski, that is a deflating blow to a very tough-minded, resilient team. But this is a challenge for Clemson. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not just trying to overcome the deficit, but to lose the, the leader of that defense in the middle. What, by the way, really well-designed play. As, as I said, Jamar Chase had to be careful as he was setting that, that screen to open that up for the tight end. Got to make it look like you're running a route instead of blocking. We talked about the great versus great matchup. LSU's red zone offense against Clemson's red zone defense. Huge edge LSU. If this touchdown stands, that's four TDs and four red zone trips. And Clemson's just not used to getting mesmerized down here in that department. One more look. This may be the best angle. It's the ref cam. Ball across the plane right there. Yeah, that's what Bill said right there. Perhaps just a fraction before the left toe hits the white. And that's all it has to be. Again, it has to be irrefutable to take away the call. And I think it's going to stand. Yeah. Don't you, Bill? It, it looks I actually would confirm it. I've, yeah. I've got the ball just breaking the plane before that's down. I think it's an excellent call by the official on the goal line. Here's the play design I talked about with Chase. Watch him. He had to be careful of, of kind of setting this screen and making it look like he's running a route. Does a good enough job, even though his arm's extended. They got away with it and freed up Moss to get to After that corner. After review, the ruling of a touchdown stands as called. So Burrow with his fourth touchdown pass tonight, his second to his good buddy Moss, now has the FBS single season touchdown record all to himself. He had shared it momentarily with Colt Brennan and LSU. Chance to go back up by 10 with York on for the PAT. 43 yard screen to Chase Kirk once again, number one with a huge impact play to spark a touchdown drive. And the lead is 10. 5-13 to play in the third quarter. Time for Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers to try to answer. Goodyear providing the aerial coverage. 
Best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Right next door to the Superdome is the Smoothie King Center, home of the Pelicans, and they'll host the Clippers at 3.30 Eastern time Saturday on ABC, trying to get Zion Williamson back and healthy. And in prime time, LeBron and the Lakers on top of the Western Conference take on Harden and Westbrook and the Rockets, both games streaming on the ESPN app. So once again, the deficit is double digits for Lawrence and the Tigers, and the kickoff gets away from ETN, and it'll be a touchback. So Trevor has shown his toughness and his resilience, and he's going to answer the bell one more time now, Kirk. He sure is going to have to. I mean, it is, it, for, for Clemson to continue to fight back, it means Trevor Lawrence in the passing game are going to be able to have to make some big plays. And Lawrence is more than capable, obviously, of doing that. But will he have time to throw? And can his receivers help him out and try to win? They continue. Remember, they're going after Fulton. One, trying to stay away from Stingley. Not to say that they won't eventually try to go that way. He, right now, he's into the boundary down at the bottom. Lawrence, without a touchdown pass tonight, he's got a streak of 24 straight with the TD. They've contained him as a runner so far tonight, much better than Ohio State did. But that's a nice first down game. Yeah, that, that defense is locked in on trying to take away nine and his explosive ability. Linebackers both flowing that way and gave him a nice crease on that left side. Follows his blocks and gets some positive yards. Only down ten. Now you're just under five minutes in the third. You see Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott continue to stick with their offensive game plan. Pressure is picked up. Lawrence gets it out, and it's intercepted. Christian Fulton, there's a flag down after the interception. That would be the first pick for Lawrence in a long time if it stands, but it's going to come back. And that official from the back end called that. He had the better view. Fulton, who's been picked on this time, got inside and tried to jump the, the route by Justin Ross. Was running in disbelief. Defense number one, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Dave Aranda and his defense. Now we'll have to dig deep here. Another penalty has set up Clemson near midfield. And he's got his left hand there. He just grabbed onto the shoulder as Ross made his cut to the post. He went to the inside. Tough to see there. But he had his hand on him, which was fine. But when he made his move to the inside, he clinched and grabbed onto the jersey. And that's the look that the official had. You can grab the jersey as long as you don't turn or impede the receiver. In the official judgment, that happened. Not popular with the LSU fans. Play action. Launching downfield for Ross, who's just too tightly covered. Come on. It's pressured. Stingley was in coverage there. How about the coverage by Stingley? It, it, it's almost like that side of the field is shut down. And Justin Ross is an elite receiver. And what I love about Stingley as a young corner in the college game especially is he played receiver in high school. He has those instincts. And as soon as that receiver starts to peek up with his eyes, that's when Stingley starts to peek up himself. But there, stride for stride in phase. Second and ten. Lawrence is pressured. ETN. Which is just a false start. There's a flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Cerebral right tackle. The senior, Tremaine Ankrum. Guilty. Stingley, who led the SEC. Six interceptions. One of the best in the country. A remarkable true freshman season. Only freshman to make the AP first team All-American list. T. Higgins remains in the locker room for Clemson. First and 15, late pressure, completion ETN, and it is blown up by Patrick Queen, a loss after the catch of one. Uh, he saw this the entire time. He's here, he works to the inside, but he's got his eyes exactly where they need to be on ETN. Has him on lockdown. Didn't hesitate at all. You know, he's so twitchy has such suddenness at that inside linebacker spot. He's almost like a safety play in there. Great in coverage, shows it, shows it there. Clemson, which has converted just one of eight. Third downs tonight, needs 16 here. LSU giving a big cushion. 
Chase on pressuring the quarterback enough to force the high throw and it's fourth down. That's exactly right. He didn't get there, but from the blind side of a quarterback, he affected him. He's had success at getting around Carmen, the left tackle. And I think it hurried him, made him uncomfortable. And as a, as a rush in, coming off the edge there, that's all you have to do. You don't always have to get there and, a, and get the sack. That's his 10th overthrow because of the pressure that LSU's been able to get on, on him. Spire is running again. And Stingley comes up, makes the catch, and is hit immediately. He thought he might create a big return, but knocked down there. You know, there's a difference between these two quarterbacks who are both superb Kirk in almost every situational category there is a difference under pressure yes Lawrence is under 50% yeah. while pressured which yep. is not bad Burrow has been exceptional well, it year. speaks volumes to me of where Joe Burrow is the fifth year guy Trevor is beautiful as he is at 6'6 220 is still growing in that capacity and that's why next year will be so good for him to continue to grow this is a big series in his football game with LSU up 10 Edward Zillaire not next to the quarterback. It's Chris Curry who filled in for Edward Zillaire when his hamstring hurt in that semifinal game and ran with great energy. Burrow hesitating, taking off, buying time, and just flips it off. And Jefferson in space darts down inside the 30. Sometimes it's just not fair when you can make a play like that on the run. How about the awareness to stay behind the line of scrimmage by Joe Burrow? He brings the defense to him. Here's his athletic ability. Now the awareness. Just trying to pull that defender 12. Came on Wallace to him, which he did, and then dumps it. Great job by nine. 35-yard gain. Now Burrow looking for the kill shot down the field. Launching again for Chase, who could not come up with it. A superb night. But that could have been another touchdown. Boy, they are in sync. Here's Joe's dad looking on. I think this ball is thrown perfectly outside shoulder. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? You, you couldn't have handed that any better to Chase. Hey, Chase, I don't know if he lost it. Let's not get It's not a mistake. This kid is gifted eight receptions, 218 yards. He's obviously having a big night. But, boy, he'd love to have that one back. That should have been a hat trick of touchdowns. Yeah. Bounced right off the shoulder pad. He couldn't have placed that ball any better. Clemson defense just trying to hang on as the LSU offense getting near the red zone again. And Burrow hesitates. What's he going to do here? Sidesteps the tackler and somehow finds a few yards. Let's keep in mind that James Kowski is not in the middle of that defense. Jake Venables is in there. Coach's son understands the defense. But face it, even though he's a great player and has a great future, Skowski's played all year and is making all the calls. It's T. Higgins, which is important to see him coming back for Clemson. Yeah, one key Tiger defender ejected, one of the best offensive players limited at the moment. So it's third down again. Burrow needs seven. They are in French field goal range. And Clemson calls a timeout. Not ideal down 10 to spend a timeout on defense, but you can see how important Dabo Sweeney believes this play is right here. Clemson gets that dream start for the second half. They get the three and out, touchdown, two-point conversion. But Burrow and LSU just taking a deep breath and going back to work and reclaim momentum. Yeah, so we, we said before the drive, such a, a pivotal sequence of events right here. Not only with the injury to Skowski, the touchdown by LSU, they get the ball right back, and now they've got a chance to put another touchdown on the board. And at that point, going into the fourth quarter, it's very, very hard, obviously, to play catch up with this LSU offense. So, yeah, we saw that spread look. And, and when you see that that empty look, you know, we've seen a lot of tonight. You got to either defend all those receivers or you got to keep a guy in the box to account for Burrow in the quarterback draw. He's hurt him, even though he's hurting himself. He's hurt him with the quarterback draw out of this look. And the guy who was spying him, Skalski, as you said, not in there now. Both Chase and Jefferson are to the left. See, somebody's got to come out to the bottom to help out against those three receivers. Instant pressure, ball out quickly. Chase has got it, but he doesn't have first down yardage. Caught in heavy traffic. And Venables was right there in the area. It's fourth down, and here comes the field goal team. Really good job by that defense. Ball comes out quick. They blitz Tanner Muse. 
But they did a good job of keeping their eyes up and had a, a, a four or five different uh, orange hats there running to the football. Ed York, 21 of 26 on the year, but between 40 and 49, hardly automatic. It was just five for nine from this distance. And this for a 13 point lead. Drives it, but it's going to slide wide right. So LSU cannot add to the lead. They come up empty. It's a big stop for Clemson without Skalski on the field. Huge stop. The drop by Jamar Chase. Talked about, we both said how big that was. That's a ball he catches nine and a half times out of ten. That's a touchdown. That's potentially a knockout shot up 42 to 35. Instead, he keeps Clemson in this game. They get a stop, and then they miss a missed field goal. They're only down ten now. Still here in the third quarter. Ocho knows that they let a great chance get away to stretch the lead and really put this Clemson offense on the ropes late third quarter. It's an option look, the late catch, dangerous one. ETN got it, but Patrick Queen got him for a loss. Speed option. They go into the boundary, and, and a great job by by Chase on forces the pitch, and then a miss block that allows Queen to be able to get there. Now, option football. If you take the quarterback, there should be an alley to be able to get to the, that edge and be able to pick up some yards. But because of the quickness of eight Queen, he got off the block and was able to make the play on ETN. As you well know, my friend, think about the option. Quarterback's going to take a hit. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence did that time. It's a low throw, incomplete. Try to get it to Higgins. Now it's third and 12. Now there, there wasn't much of an opportunity there, obviously, after the catch. But T. Higgins, who's battling through some pain, you got to show mental toughness. You got to fight through the pain. You got to come up with catches like that. Pick up six yards, seven yards. Give yourself a chance to make it more like a third and four or five. Now, third and 12. Higgins in the slot to the right. Here comes the pressure. Lawrence backpedals, delivers a throw over the head of Ross. That was a tough, tough throw into coverage, and it's fourth down. Yeah, he did a good job of kind of sliding away from the protection, but i got to give all the LSU secondary some credit. These Clemson receivers are not getting off of this coverage. But it, it, it's tight coverage and long, tough throws by Trevor Lawrence. I mean, that's not easy execution there, and it's a good job by this by that secondary. We've got Justin Jefferson, not Stingley, back to return this punt. Spires kind of hit a knuckleball. It sounded ugly. It wasn't very long, and Jefferson's going to run up and make a fair catch at the 42. So good field position for Burrow as they continue in the final minute of this third quarter for to try to get the touchdown that just might go a long way to securing this championship. What were some of the, the, the big boxing classics that we've had in here? You said Spinks against Ali, and yep. the No Moss. The no with, Moss. That was more about tactical supremacy than but, a knockout. But it, but it just feels like Clemson's on the ropes right now, just kind of hanging on, and LSU's trying to come up with a knockout shot. It's a 33-yard punt. Burrow right back to work. That possession just 50 seconds. Edwards Hilaire showing his patience and picks his way for a first down gain of four. Kept two safeties back. Quick indicator for Burrow to see that. They're going to try to run the ball every time into that look. They're forcing them to give them a single high safety. And if they do, they're going to go right back to Jamar Chase at the top, see if he can win one on one. Edward Hilaire, meanwhile, has been kept in check very well by this Clemson defense. The star tailback rushing for just 39 yards. He got a couple catches. Burrow from the pocket. Flips it short on cue. Edward Hilaire makes the catch. And he fights for everything. He's not interested in going out of bounds. No, he'll, he'll never go out of bounds. You can only it for so long, right? Yeah. yeah you, you know, we kind of sensing that they want to try to give the ball it looks like a flag came in late on that play 73 that McGee looked like he got in and pushed somebody late might have got Isaiah Simmons it would be a mental mistake that would drive Orgeron crazy 
Again, the importance of this possession, trying to stretch the lead. It moved the ball to the Clemson 37. Ended. Personal foul. Offense, number 73. 15-yard penalty. Remains first and 10. Of the senior has been battling an ankle injury, healthy enough to go, but an absolutely senseless play at the end as he comes and hits Simmons. Well, you, uh, number one, you appreciate the effort. Anytime linemen are downfield, I, I, they're 320 pounds. You love to see the intensity. You just got to be mentally sharper. You got to be. You got to have some awareness to you. You can't make a, a bonehead mistake like that late in this game, especially when you have Clemson on the ropes. A dead ball, still a first down, but the ball back in LSU yep. territory. So. LSU, 15 minutes away if they can protect this lead from capping a 15-0 season. 35-25. Now a treat here, an exclusive look at Marvel Studios' new movie, Black Widow, which will be in theaters everywhere coming up this May. Ten-point game entering the final quarter. College football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. LSU with a first down near midfield trying to stretch the lead. Each team with a touchdown in the third quarter. Clemson taking just one point off the halftime deficit by a two-point conversion. And Joe Burrow close to a 400-yard passing game. Not quite the astronomical numbers against the Sooners but against this defense after a slow start extremely impressive the Brazilian goes in motion here comes the pressure and he's open in the flat can they make a mess he spins free but just able to hold him up long enough as Kendrick <laughs> just like to arrive help, help. <laughs> help. Get out there one on one with him. It's really tough because even if you get to him, the strength in his lower body, it's just hard to bring him down. But now they fake it to him. Burrow wanting to throw downfield. Now just buying time. Still scampering around and delivers a throw to Moss. And the tight end makes another big play inside the Clemson 40. Just, Randy's kids having a night. He sure is. You just can't. You can't You can't cover a guy that long. Look how long he's keeping this play alive. They're essentially rushing three and dropping eight. And Joe, the last three or four games, is completing 90% of his passes against rush three, drop eight. Wow. And that time... <laughs> You, know, you give him enough time with his accuracy, he's going to find somebody open. Remember, they've been going to chase on this wheel route from the slot. Try to bring pressure again. Slant. Jefferson. Catch. Gain of eight on first down. Kayvon Wallace stopped him. And Clemson got away with one there. If Joe Burrow would have seen it, he had a touchdown. And Jamar Chase said, oh, I had him. Edwards Hill there, barrels forward downhill, first down to the 25. Can't find every open receiver though. No, he finds most of them. Yeah, he, he does. He does. There's still, remember, we still trying to challenge the, the inside. Tanner Muse, who's a safety, he's walked up as a backer in this game with that, that three down line. One linebacker now is Jake Venables and the seven defensive backs. They thought if they went to this look, Steve Insminger telling us they thought they thought they would have to be able to run the ball. In fact, they've run Burrow more than than Clyde Edwards Hilaire tonight. It could work on the play clock now. Snap it at four. Burrow has lots of time and delivers and chase that time a short catch and not much after it. Jefferson I should say over the two yard gain. Really tight coverage by Kayvon Wallace, versatile senior. If you look at this secondary, because to defend this offense, you need Kendrick as a corner, A.J. Terrell as a corner, and their third best cover guy is a safety, 12, Kayvon Wallace, who has to hold up there in many plays against Justin Jefferson. He's on him again, Kirk, off to the left. Chase, the left outside of the formation on second and nine. They're bringing it. Burrow's got time, launching for the end zone, jump ball, touchdown, Terrence Marshall. And Burrow believes 
That was a crucial play to stretch the lead. You can see by the reaction. Dropped a dime again. Uh, he, he's gonna he's gonna find that matchup and, and Marshall who hasn't had a, a many chances. They've been going to Jamar Chase. We just circled saying that he can come from that spot. This time it's Marshall. It's six four. He puts it up, adjusts back to the ball, and Kendrick just never had a chance on the play. Marshall, a big, tall, 6'4 receiver, is sometimes forgotten, but the success of Jason Jefferson makes his 13th touchdown reception. You saw Burrow's parents, Jimmy and Robin, celebrating. LSU getting closer to a championship, up by 17. Total weight to play. A plenty of post-championship game coverage with Scott Van Pelt. Have the post game reactions. We'll join the show. The winning coach will add his take and the first look at the odds for next season after the game on ESPN, also the ESPN app. They're playing the Garth Brooks Classic, the Serenade at Tiger Stadium, calling Baton Rouge, sweet Baton Rouge, and up for the Tigers campus down here in New Orleans and all over this state. They are preparing for the party to begin if LSU can hold on to what is now a 17 point lead with about 12 minutes to play. From the goal line, Etienne's gonna bring it out, break a tackle, and it'll make something happen on special teams. Gotta hold your breath, the kicker was down there to help force him down at the 30. Well, we've seen Jamar Chase in his spot, the slot, this time it's Marshall. He get him one-on-one, -on -one. You're gonna, he's gonna take these shots, you know, whether it's into the boundary or this time to the field. Just put it up, let the receiver adjust to the ball, defensive back never sees it, Joe Burrow he has such confidence in these receivers to win. And look at that size and length of Marshall. And Burrow comes off after that and said, it's time to fit me for a ring. I won that Heisman. Now it's time to fit me for that ring. He does not lack confidence. And his confidence is even growing now. 442 yards, five touchdown passes. Lawrence, desperate to answer, delivers a high throw. Kirk, he's just been off target a lot tonight. That was over Justin Ross again. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, he just seems a, a bit out of sorts, you know, and, and I think LSU deserves some credit for that because it, even when they've not been able to necessarily flush him out of the pocket, even when he's been in the pocket, I think he has felt some pressure. He now has 13 throws that have been overthrown to his receivers. Second and ten. Sometimes when you try to put so much on it, the ball will sail on you. Play action. Another long throw. Gets made by Ross, who scoots out of bounds. They'll move the sticks out across the 40. Yeah, There's they're, still plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. And, and, and you can see by the energy of Trevor Lawrence after that completion and first down, even he's thinking about the clock. There's an awareness there. They've got to go some form of their own kind of tempo, but where they're not breakneck speed where they're just out of control you start to do the math and figure the possessions can Clemson score 17 sure but really can't afford to allow LSU anything on offense Lawrence rolls they pick up the pressure and again the throw is low and a flag comes in Vincent was covering Rogers and grabbed him Pass interference, defense number five. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Let's see if he grabs jersey or grabs his hips, maybe. Hey, grab the arm, the left arm. Grab, grab the hold of it. Moves the ball in LSU territory. Tenth penalty on LSU, double the number. Of Clemson. Now Clemson goes with his empty look. Lawrence has plenty of time and launches downfield. Higgins has got it for a touchdown. A flag is down. Will it come back for offensive pass interference? Yes, that's the signal. Vincent, it was just guilty of pass interference on the other side, pass says, I got shoved. Offense number five. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Ball underthrown. Higgins tries to adjust. There's a sh push and shove back and forth. They feel that that's on on Higgins. And he grabs a hold. And Higgins grabs a hold of the jersey first. He grabbed a hold to give himself momentum. 
to try to work back to the ball, and I think that's what they caught him for. Clemson fans turn to Boo. That takes a touchdown off the board and moves the ball all the way back to the Clemson 37-yard line. Bill? I agree with you guys. That deep, There should have been a grab there for the defense on the defense there. He responded back. There was some separation, but that was caused totally by the defensive grab. Okay. So in Bill's view, that should have been a touchdown reception for Higgins, an enormous call. Pac-12 crew was under some scrutiny coming in because of the difficulties of officiating in that conference. Those kinds of pass interference calls are always judgment, and I don't oh, think they're called the same conference to conference, frankly. Yeah, Bill, like, see, to me, initially, you see that, to me, the pull of that jersey and then the re reaction from five, Vincent. See, there's the initial pull, and he pulls back. How do you how do you separate that when they both are they, interfering like that? look to see who gains the advantage. Okay. You know? If I gain no advantage from it, I haven't done anything. Second and 25. Lawrence flushed, and he'll be knocked down right near the line of scrimmage by Patrick Queen. Len Logan also imposed himself in that play. Uh, Patrick Queen's been all over the field. He has had a great game. In the middle of that LSU defense against the run, they blitzed him at times. He's been out in space. He's played man-to-man. -man. A young man that didn't play early in the season. He was more of a guy that would come in and substitute by the Texas game on week two. He took over in the middle and was really having enjoying himself a great championship game. And Dave Aranato is the most improved player in the defense this season. You're right. He's had a whale of a ball game. Leading 26 on third down. Lawrence escapes and bounces a throw. Got to get it across the middle to Ross, who's been frustrated tonight. Just out of sorts, man. It, 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 throwing the football is so much about a rhythm, a balance. And I know he's got pressure, but if you look in the middle of that field, you got to give him a shot. Give him a shot to make that play. And it just has not been accurate tonight throwing the ball. If you think, Kirk, about last year's championship game when he completely outplayed to a tongue of a low, everything went right. Yeah. Despite feeling awful, Lawrence played beautifully. A year later, a totally different story. 17 of 36, still hasn't thrown a touchdown pass. It's the fourth straight punt for this Clemson offense. They thought they had momentum after scoring quickly in the third quarter. You're watching the College Football Playoff National Championship presented by AT&T. The College Football Playoff National Championship game is presented by AT&T and in part by Dos Equis. Keep it interessante. Please enjoy Dos Equis responsibly and Northwestern Mutual. Spend your life living. Four post-game show coming up, including the presentation of the National Championship Trophy. LSU protecting a 17-point lead. 10-10 to play in the 2020 National Championship game. They believe a lot in the magic of numerology and signs down here. So they were thinking 2020. Hmm. We got a Heisman winner. The last one was old number 20, Billy Cannon. 60 years ago, three times 20. Sadly, Billy passed away May 20 last year at the age of 80. Four times 20. Are you with me? Yeah. Well, Burrow preseason 200 to 1 to win the Heisman. Jeez. 10 times 20. Wow. <laughs> Good stuff. They believe in that stuff down here. Yeah. Right okay, now, it all, yeah. all adds up. Unless you're just trying to avoid it, the turnover, the kind of play that could turn momentum. Edward Solaire, who flat out just doesn't fumble, pumped into a blocker, kind of shoved him forward. It's a nice game. Of oh, the Sugar Bowl, back in 1959, New Year's Day, there's Billy Cannon on the halfback pass. The only points of the game comes from the halfback. There were six completed passes combined. They run on the old T formation. Some some more blue uniforms that game. That's a throwback there. Only perfect season for LSU football until perhaps this season. They'd already won the national championship before that win over Clemson. They voted before the Bulls back in those days. Edward Zilaire muscling. It'll be right near the marker at the 20. Yeah, looking down at these stats, you see that. Joe Burrow has 442 yards passing with five touchdowns. And you go back to the way this game started. The key to the game was 
not so much could Clemson cover because it's tough to cover these five receivers if you include the tight end in the back. It was could they confuse the offensive line and could they affect Joe Burrow? Could they blitz him? Could they confuse him? They did early, but as the game has gone on, give credit to LSU for making the adjustments because once he's had time, Clemson has not been able to hold up on the back end. That was a spectacular second quarter. And now, with the clock running down, Coach O, not quite as quick as Dabo, but he had, showed a good four-step burst to get he's the timeout line, call. Right? Yeah, he's a lineman. <laughs> Take a break with him. 8.51 to play. 17-point game. Tonight's a &T best performance. Burrow, who broke records for his highest winning margin, has shattered a bunch more tonight. That's the first touchdown. Chase then the scramble for a touchdown. Yeah, he's done a, a lot with his feet tonight, but what it's been lethal has been his ability to find those open receivers and throw for touchdown passes. The one-on-one -on -one chances downfield, receivers going up, adjusting to the ball, helping him out. Five touchdown passes on the night. And he, of course, he ran for one, as you just saw. Trying to work the clock. Edward Zelaire takes off. Darts forward, bangs forward, just doesn't want to go down. Gets out near the 40. Burrow with five touchdown passes tonight. Owns the record for a single season. Responsible for a total of 65. And in the BCS CFP era, which began in 98, he now has a record 442 and counting. This LSU offense that had combined for 110 points in its last two games against Georgia and Oklahoma. Now going to play three top five teams, and it's 152 points and counting in those three games, and over 1,300 passing yards. As long as I've been following the game, I, I've never seen an offense with, with the perfect storm of a new system taking over for an archaic offense for like the last decade. And you see Joe Brady there on the left, the passing game coordinator that brought that system in from the NFL and his time with the Saints and Sean Payton and Drew Brees. And you have a quarterback that understands it, has the ability to process, has the weapons around him. It's the most impressive offense that I think I've seen wow. in my life. That's a big statement, man. And again, the slant cut by Jefferson. Steve Ensminger is a... Powerful figure at LSU, the man they call Slinger, who's a quarterback in the Charlie McClendon era. Obviously, the family undergoing a tragedy when Carly McCord, his daughter-in-law, was killed along with five others in a plane crash en route to that Peach Bowl game in Atlanta. Steve finding out just before his team took the field for warm-ups and an incredibly tough, stoic guy coached through that game, has been very supportive of his son, Steve Jr., in the family's time of tragedy. He's just been a rock sure has. at Orgeron, really ad admiring the strength of Vince Minger. He's a survivor. He's been fired three times as an assistant. He's bounced around. He worked at Clemson at one point in, in Tommy West era, Ball not very start. successful there. Offense, but now to be able to Five -yard penalty. Still first down. step aside, put the ego away, allow Brady, the whippersnapper, to come in there, and is this tandem Boy, you love to see Ensminger being part of what you call the greatest offense you've seen. And, and the guy on the left brings in the new offense. He wins the, the, the Broyles Award for the top assistant in the entire country. And Ensminger's call the plays. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic that they have. And it's unselfish on everybody's behalf. But the players have to execute the scheme. And Joe Burrow and these receivers in the back are exceptional. Here comes a flag, a couple of them. Chase was defended by Terrell on that slant. If you can't stop him, just grab him. That's Binger, a guy, by the way, who sleeps in his office four nights a week, Sunday through Wednesday, sleeps in the office, gets about four or five hours sleep. Spends Thursdays with the family. That's family day. For fouls by both teams, they will offset an eligible receiver downfield, offense number 68. Holding of an eligible receiver, defense number 8. Replay first down. Well, that, that's the potential pitfall of those, those run pass options of 
You got linemen thinking it's a run call. Quarterbacks reading safeties coming down to help out. He pulls it out to throw it. And you got linemen eight to ten yards downfield. So it's offsetting. You can just replay the down. Yeah, but that is great. I mean, I, you hear about coaches, they study film, it's late. Sometimes, occasionally, they may stay over. Not him. It's part of the routine. Nice That's part of the routine. I mean, how far away is his house? <laughs> Burrow hesitates, just flips it over the middle, and caught up in traffic was Chase. It's viewed as incidental contact. There is no flag. Well, you got linemen again downfield. 73 McGee, he's downfield by uh, about five yards by the time the ball is thrown. Brent Venables ran out onto the field. I think that's probably what he was pointing towards. Let's get a little ragged here, partner, in the fourth quarter. It sure is. LSU. Certainly feels comfortable where they are, just trying to work the clock. Already spent almost four minutes on this drive, only moved it 33 yards, but it's been about chewing away clock and taking away comes his chance of a comeback. That's third and second and 15, and Inbert Solero is going to be tackled behind the line again. I, Chris, I just want to go back to this offense and what makes it. I mean, we can talk about the scheme, we can talk about these receivers, but Joe Burrow is a, basically an assistant coach playing quarterback. He's a grad student, takes classes online. He's at the facility as much as the assistant coaches. Studies film, breaks it down, understands where to go with the ball, has answers. And so when you have a quarterback in a full progression read system that knows where to go and finds those matchups and throws the ball accurately with that skill, man, it's a, it's a great combination. It's very rare in college. You see it with Rodgers and Breeze and Brady, but not in college. Well, the man who wears number nine for the Saints in this building was the boyhood idol of Burley. Got a chance to meet at the Saints facility yesterday. That was a serious thrill for Joe. Not, not quite as thrilling as tonight, but it's been a heck of a week for the Heisman Trophy winner. There's Drew Breeze's son's coming over to say hello. And, and Joe didn't hesitate. You're the reason I'm a Saints fan. You're the reason I wear number nine. You're my hero. I mean, he just laid it all out there. And Drew knew most of those things, but I think Joe Burrow, one of the few times he didn't know what to say. You know, just kind of super humble in the face of Drew Brees. Not often is he super humble, I might add. <laughs> but another kid from the Midwest who found his way to Louisiana. And like Brees, who won the Super Bowl, of course. Burrow closing in on his championship. Boy, spun down. Racy McGrath races downfield, and the gunner for LSU grabs Rodgers. Clemson will set up at the 15, running out of time. Now, the Mormons bracing for a big party. Aerial coverage overhead provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Inside of five minutes to play in the LSU faithful inside the dome Standing and roaring for their defense, which has held Trevor Lawrence Kirk in the second half to five for 14 And just 37 passing yards. Uh, it's easy to look at Trevor and he hasn't had a great night with his rhythm But these receivers have not played well or held up well against the LSU secondary Lawrence takes off on a scramble takes a big hit from chase on moves the sticks across the 25 he showed so much courage in that Ohio State game, willing his team to come back and win. He takes a big shot there from Chase on the enforcer of the LSU defense, gets right back up and trying to get points on the board. From the pocket delivers, and Higgins makes the catch out near midfield front of Stevens, but he hasn't been able to make nearly enough of an impact tonight. No, that time he looked much better, much more comfortable sitting in that pocket and, and letting Higgins clear over the middle, went over the top of Patrick Queen that time for that completion. Flushed again, has room, makes a cut, pays the price, lost the ball. Lawrence coughs it up at the end of the run. LSU's got the football, and they got one hand on the trophy. Derek Stingley Jr. continues a brilliant freshman campaign with a fumble recovery. Delpit caused it. Yeah, Delpit knocks it out. That's the risk you take, you know. And you know, I love Trevor Lawrence for competing. 
you know, he takes off, he, he sees things open up, open up, he's being a competitor, right? He's trying to trying to find room to, to get uh, some yards to run and get a first down. The ball comes out clearly. Delpit does a good job of putting his shoulder pad right on the football to jar it loose. And there's Stingley, the corner, to pick it up. I'll tell you, this defense from LSU took a lot of heat throughout much of the year, especially after the Ole Miss game. But these last four or five games, it's been a different unit. Dave Aranda's done a heck of a job with this group. You see Dabo Sweeney as Edwards Allaire bounces it down the sideline, just sty slides and stays inbounds wisely. You saw Sweeney and his quarterback, who's going to lose the game for the first time since November 17, 2017, when Cartersville, Georgia High was shocked by Blessed Trinity. His first loss yep. as a college starter, and Clemson's going to have their first loss in 742 days since this building when they lost the semifinals to Bama a couple of years ago. Right. What about Clyde Edwards, Hilaire? Instead of trying to fight to get a touchdown, he's well aware of what the mission and the goal is late in the game up big like this. He just slides, gets down, stays in bounds, keeps that clock moving. Got it again. But that last drive for LSU wasn't very sexy, but they did shoot more than five minutes off the clock and just about. That's all. Down. You know, when you're up this big late. As competitive as Joe Burrow is, and as much as he just wants to keep the foot on the accelerator, just keep going. And they're, they're sensing it. They, they know. They know where they're, what's ahead of them right now. It's almost party time in New Orleans. It always is, but this is going to be a really big party. And. Coach Ed Orgerana comes from deep in the bayou, La Fouche Parish, where the shrimpers hang out. They pull oysters out of the Gulf. One of their own, a Cajun coaching LSU and a source of enormous pride for him. His mom, Rose, is 77 years old, and she couldn't be prouder of Ed. He's been all over this state. There's La Rose way down there in the bayou. Goes up, Natchitoches plays his college football at Northwestern State, playing on that D-line. McNeese State begins his college career. He's with the Saints, coaching the D-line for a season. Went out to SC, where he was 6-2 and two as an interim coach, but Pat Hayden passed him over, and that was a stinging blow to him, but it all worked out pretty well for him. Absolutely, and I, we, I think we all, as college football fans, have to tip our cap to Coach O. I think a lot of people snickered, wondered, what are they doing hiring Ed Orgeron. Didn't, you, didn't, didn't LSU see what happened when he was a head coach at Ole Miss? People made funny videos online about him and his voice. And you know what? All he did is keep working. He adjusted. He tweaked things. He brought in a new offense. Surrounded himself with great people, great coaches. Hired great players. First thing he's going to say when he walks off the field with Tom Rinaldi, he's going to talk about the great state of Louisiana. He gets it. It's a perfect fit as the head coach of LSU. And third and three, Burrow gets it out. It's off the hands of Jefferson. Besides saying go Tigers, he's going to talk about the great state of Louisiana. And you know what? With Alabama losing and Tua leaving, right now, that SEC West, Coach O is thinking, why not us? Why can't we become the bar now, not just in 2019, but beyond? The way they're recruiting, facilities, the commitment they make. I don't see LSU going away. Well, they have dethroned the toughest out in the sport in the last couple of years in Clemson. Burrow's going to go away, and he'll be tough to replace. His fourth down play, Burrow flips it in the flat. Edwards Lair is going to get it, and a lot more. And he'll stay in bounds again down inside the 15. And Joe Burrow, speaking of the state of Louisiana, coming down here, embracing this state. And these people spelling his name with an E-A-U-X on senior day. Kirk, he will be able to walk across the bayou without getting wet for the rest of his life. You talk about a living legend as his parents embrace. It's going to be hard to find a match in the sports history. I mean it. I agree with you, man. I agree. And, and he needed to win tonight for that to be true, and he did. Yep. And seeing a shot of his parents, just want to say his dad has been in, has been in coaching for 50 years he's been in the game as a player as a coach decided to retire this year as Ohio University's defensive coordinator Edward Zolaire stays inbound barrels down inside the five you know, he decided to to retire 
Here he is, wearing number nine. He's been coach. All he knows is coaching ball. And instead, he wanted to follow Joe after transferring or transferring from Ohio State to LSU. He decides he's going to go to every game, home and away, with his wife, and take it in and be a fan. Tailgate, hang out. Little did he know what was in store for 2019 with his son. They're pretty stoic. They don't shed tears any more than their son usually does, but it's been a tearful end of the season for LSU. The victory formation in the final minute. By the way, class move there by Coach O and shows the respect he has for Dabo and for Clemson to take that knee instead of trying to put another one in. Well, it's a trifecta that very few have achieved. Win the Heisman, perfect season, national championship. As they say in the Bayou, les et la bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. LSU sits on the throne of college football. And as they knock out the defending champs, an offensive onslaught. 628 yards. And the supreme confidence, the swag of this team in white, purple, and gold. Kirk, they backed it up tonight. They came in. I've never prepped for a game of this magnitude and felt a team as confident as LSU coming into this game. Me neither. <laughs> Ever. And, and you didn't know if it would blow up in their face or if it would end up being true. As you see, they, they, they had a feeling of what was going to come tonight. The confetti shower inside the Superdome. And somewhere down there, Tom Rinaldi with a happy coach up. Chris, thank you very much. Ed, everything you've been through, all it took to get here, when you look up and you yeah. see that confetti fall, yeah. what goes through you? So happy for our team. This is about our team. This is about our coaching staff, about everybody who wanted to put and go to the great state of Louisiana. I'm just so happy for everybody. Down for the first time all season by double digits. You come back. What did you learn about this group tonight? Seventh win against a top 10 team. Character, integrity, great players, great coaching staff. Will to win. Joe Burrow stood up on that Heisman stage and concluded his speech by talking about all you mean to him. Yeah. What does he mean to you? The world. Uh, he's one of the greatest players in LSU history. Uh, he's done so much for the state of Louisiana and LSU. We are so grateful to Joe Burrow. Finally, Ed, this team's motto, one team, one heartbeat. What does this night, this season mean to the heart of Louisiana from someone from here who represents it? That's what it's all about. Uh, I grew up wanting to be the head coach at LSU. I'm so proud for the state of Louisiana. We've had support from the governor, from the president, from everybody that loves LSU. I'm just so happy for the people from Louisiana. But you got to give the credit to this football team, man. They've been working for one year. They deserve this day. Go ahead and say it, Ed. <laughs> Go tag it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Joe, you said that winning the Heisman didn't mean much. It was this national championship game and bringing that title back to Baton Rouge. What does it mean to say that you've finally been able to accomplish that here in New Orleans? This years of hard work paying off. This is, this is an incredible moment for our, for our program, for Baton Rouge, for Louisiana. Uh, this, is, this is just so special. I'm kind of speechless. You guys allowed Clemson to strike first, but you never flinched. Where did that confidence come from to know that you were going to get the win here tonight? We thought we got down, I think it was 17-7. We never flinched. We knew we knew what we had. We, we had some tough breaks getting backed up inside the five a couple of times. They had a really good plan early. And, you know, once we figured out what they were trying to do, our coaches put together a great game plan at halftime, and we started to roll. We saw you coming back early from halftime, but you took a big hit going into the locker room. What allowed you to battle through that injury? There's no other option. Uh, this is a national championship. This is, that's all. 
I wasn't going to go sit on the sideline, that's for sure. You know, coming into this season, your dad retired to watch every single game, and he's been in the stadium celebrating with you. What does it mean to be able to win this national championship in front of him? You know, there's... My dad won a great cup in Canada, but there was kind of this, this borough curse. My brother lost the national championship. My dad lost a couple of great cups. I lost the state championship. Both my brothers lost state championships. You know, this is, this is kind of our first one, so this is super special. Well, I see you haven't put the ball down, and after you threw your fifth touchdown pass, we set a record for national championship. You pointed to the ring finger. Do you know what size ring you wear? Ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we already got fitted for him. All right, well, it'll be coming soon. Congratulations, Joe. <laughs> Rings. We said they were confident. <laughs> now the Burrow family curse, if that existed, has been erased. And magic carpet ride for this program and this quarterback. And it ends right on home soil with a win in the Superdome. LSU champions. And it's a special kind of delirium when you're dominant and you're really, really exciting. And they are all of that. The Ford Post Game Show coming up. National Championship Trophy well, but let's join Scott Pelpel, Sports Center.